Okay, I want to start, uh, not the presentation, but I want to go through some full, dis I'm a, a full disclosure guy, uh, I'm transparent. Um, our daughter graduated from here. We don't brag about it, but she graduated from here in 2009. Uh, and she doesn't understand why I would come back and talk here. That says a whole lot by itself. Um, full disclosure, I've met five presidents. Um, five secretaries of state, three uh, prime ministers, the secretary general of the United Nations, amongst a bunch of other people. So when I talk and I say things that sound crazy, it's not just because there's a 73-year-old crazy old man up here, which I am, but I've done a lot of shit in my life, and I've met a lot of people. I'm a proud vet. Thank you for your service, because I know there's some active in, uh, vets and active duty military in the audience. Thank you for your service. And uh, the, uh, I've been partners with the Vatican, seven or eight different foreign countries, and I've met a lot of people. I've been privileged. And um, there's a reason why the talk is, and I want to I give thanks to the financial planners here uh, at the university, and I'll tell a story how I was at the um, forefront of financial planning almost 50 years ago. and was one of the principal founders of uh, financial, certified financial planning back in 1969, almost 50 years ago. But I'll get into that later on in the slides. We have about 120 slides. Um, when I was looking for uh, distinguished alumni, uh, I had to look real hard to find any. And the, um, are you gonna say, okay, am I supposed to start? Didn't mean to interrupt you, I okay. just wanted to Go ahead. introduce and get us started. Um, Hello everyone, my name's Keon. I'm the president of the organization that is hosting the event, this uh, Financial Planners Association of Boston University. Thank you all for coming and spending your evening with us and, and Dan. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time. I'm sure Dan wants to get started and you all want to hear Dan. So again, thank you. And as an aside, he comes from the rich area where I was in the poor area in Los Angeles. But he knows exactly where I'm from and I know exactly where he's from. And yeah, <laughs> and uh, I told the story of the uh, high school, uh, girls' high school, um, Louisville High School, which is a Catholic girls' school in the San Fernando Valley. That I I didn't date every single girl there, but I dated almost every single girl there. <laughs> and all I have to say is this is before AIDS. <laughs> so I'll leave it to your imagination. I wouldn't know a condom if it fell on the floor here. <laughs> And I made this comment a few years ago in the seminar at the castle, and the next morning I walk in, and there's this shiny thing on the ground. I kind of circle around it, and I kind of kick it. Obviously, it was a condom, and everybody just laughed, 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 laughed. Well, now you've seen one, Mr. P. Now you've seen one. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, 25 years I've been at this, uh, and... Uh, the uh, part of my full disclosure, two thirds of my time is devoted pro bono. And those of you that go to he school here don't know what that means, but that means free. <laughs> so I, I donate two thirds of my time free, and we travel around talking at schools all over the world. Um, as I told a good friend of mine who flew down from uh, Montreal to have lunch with me today, we have about uh, 60 schools in 80, no, we have uh, 80 schools in 40 countries that like me to come and speak. I, I don't have that much time. Uh, and why do I speak for free? Why is everything on my site free? Because even though I believe with all my heart we're past it as a race, homo sapien is through. We're fucked. Maybe I can save a few of you. Maybe. Maybe I'm gonna touch three or four of you in the audience today. Um, and that's why I do it. Um, but as far as, and I'm not talking about the sun is going to gobble up the earth in three million years and you know, the world's going to come to an end. Everybody should know that. That's not what I mean. I mean we're through. The Romans had their time. The Athenians had their time. And we've had our time. Why does Elon Musk want to die on the way to Mars or on Mars? Because we're fucked. He knows it. I know it. And wealth, wealth, risk, reward, not is, for those of you that are students, you've been taught 
endeavors that don't work on the outside. The, 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 the formula of work 40 years for a company and maybe get a gold watch, not like this one, because this is a really expensive gold watch, get a watch after in, in retirement, are dead. And they've been dead for a long, long time. Yet, the schools are still teaching the same things. One of the things, and not just this school, but I ask at all schools, how many classes have you had in buying a business? How many classes have you had in selling a business? How many classes have you had in leadership? And so what the fuck are you learning in the business schools? Now, I'm not talking about literature, the arts, etc. cetera. And, uh, and I've been making this speech for 25 years, uh, both at European universities and American universities. And um, see, so how is it that you can go to school four years at a university or six years and not get a job? There's something not right about that. Some of you are unemployed. And you went to school. There's something not right about that. And it's because the system is busted. And, um, and we're, we're, you're going to now be able to go home if you still live at home. And I don't know how you can live at home if you're past 17, 18 years old. But I know some of you are in your 30s and you live at home. How do you get laid? <laughs> well, I mean, when you're living at I don't get that. And if you're married and your mom and dad are humping, I mean, do you take turns humping? Or what do you do? <laughs> I, I don't understand it. We, I know kids, I know guys my age that have kids in their 30s living at home. <laughs> now, the, maybe they swap off. I don't know. I don't want to know that. Uh, I don't want to know that. But you're going to, the, the, the system is busted. And uh, the, um, I'm just about the only guy out there that is uh, saying that it's busted. And yet I give all my product away free because my product will show you, in spite of the system, how to build generational wealth. Now, money's not everything, but it's the only thing anybody keeps track of. And for those of you that want to save the world, I'm not one of them, but for those of you that want to save the world, go out and make a billion dollars or change the lives of a billion people, and you will make a billion dollars, and you can take that billion dollars and go save the world. But right now, your system's not working out too well. We've got people in the audience that are making minimum wage. I know I used to make minimum wage. And for those of you, you know, I was really poor, and we're going to go through it a little bit. Uh, it's hard for anybody to believe, but I was really poor at one time. And, the, um, and I was a barrio bad boy that got very wealthy. I was a bad kid. I mean, bad transcending any of your thought process. You don't understand. Just one example. In grammar school, I tried to kill my grammar school teacher. <laughs> True. I'm not proud of it, but it's a fucking fact. Now, just think about that. Try to off your sixth grade teacher. By the grace of Allah, I was a little off, so he didn't die. Now, just think about that. And then just think about it as I grew up, and then your daughter going out with me. Your daughter going out with me. It was a scary fucking process. It was a scary fucking process. Now, let's see if I get this right. Now, when I started Quantum Leap 25 years ago, now everybody uses the terminology, it, where there was a TV program called Quantum Leap where the guy went from one time frame, time zone, he leaped into another one, 1,000 years ahead, 500. 500 years behind. And that's why I came up with the idea, because I knew how to create wealth, not 2 plus 2 equals 4. You know, 2 to the 10th power times 5 to the uh, 20th power, blah, blah, blah. I knew how to do that, and, um, because I'd done it myself. I took 800 bucks, and I turned it into 450 million, which in today's dollars is about a billion bucks. I grew 55 million percent. I grew 67,000 percent a year. 67,000% a year for eight and a half years. The computer guys said, Dan, if you had been in our business, you'd be the first trillionaire on the planet. But I wasn't. I was in bricks and mortar and oil and gas. Very slow, boring kind of business. You will understand, and again, I'm not telling you this so then, oh my God, I know why I'm such a fuck up, because I didn't have a chance. That's not why I'm telling you the story. I'm telling you the story that you can do it in spite of the system. 
in spite of the system. And we're going to give you some examples. Now, this is a lovely campus. For those of you that go here or those of you that have gone here, our daughter went here. This is certainly not where my wife and I went to school. I couldn't get into a school like this. I flunked out of university three times. Three. And I ultimately went back and graduated with honors from scratch. The, but when I figured out how to get around the system, if you will, legally, morally, ethically, everything I'm going to say is based on legal, moral, ethical. Now, some of you will twist the ethics part. Some of you will twist the morality part. I can't, I can't help that. But legal, you can't twist. <laughs> so some of you will just live with it. it's got to be legal. Now, one of my mentees, and again, I'm not bragging about this, who's currently on the run from the FBI, stole $245 million cash money. $245 million cash money. Motivation yeah, and guys and gals, it's easy to do it legally. Going to school here or going to any school even remotely like this school, you have privilege. Now, the millennials equate that to entitlement. You're privileged because you have the ability to get here either on a scholarship or your parents can pay. One or the other, some combination of the two. But when you go to a school like this, I mean, you owe something back. Now, we will differ in how you pay that back or what you pay back, if anything. We will differ in that. But you are privileged. This is a privileged town. This is where my English wife, no taxation without representation. This is where the goddamn you know, uh, Revolutionary War started in the bay over here, wherever it was, when they were throwing tea in the bay. But it's got you know, a tremendous amount of history. <laughs> now, Cradle of Liberty, we know that's 1630. Most of you may not know that this school was a Bible school to begin with. OK, and these are some of the uh, prestigious schools that are here in the area. I mean, there's 30 schools in the area, all of which are better than the school I went to. I went to a school that you have to explain about. We know that. <laughs> These are some of the people. I'm not going to um, opine on my political beliefs, whether I agree with them or don't agree with them. Uh, Riley Rosie, Secretary of Defense Cohen, Jason Alexander, for the most part, liberals. Not all liberals, but for the most part, liberals, OK? The, um, maybe that's why they wouldn't let me uh, here, go here. But the point is that, and my daughter, our daughter, who's a 2009 graduate, soon to be, a, soon to be successful. She's a manager at Fortune 500 company. Uh, and the, uh, she got a great education here. And then she went on to Northwestern and got a graduate education there. But um, and again, she says, Daddy, I'm not sure why you'd want to talk to my fellow uh, alumni here. But uh, if you want to, it's your choice. <laughs> OK. This is the what, what differentiates us, our methodology, is it's really based on the power of the human spirit. And the reason why there's only about seven or 800,000 people on the planet that are capable of doing QLA is because it takes a huge amount of sacrifice. Right now, you're accountable to nobody. You get up when you want to get up. You go to bed when you want to go to bed. You should, maybe you show up for work, or maybe you don't. You can't get fired. Unless they catch you having sex with a fucking dog in the goddamn lobby, you can't get fired. Now, what kind of accountability is that? It's none. Hence, ergo, your whole life is fucked up. And then you complain. Most people buy what they need. Some people buy what they want. QLA buys what they dream. The system is based on huge beliefs. I'm not an Obama supporter, but I do admire one thing that the former president did. When he was an 18, 19-year-old crackhead in college, he came up with the idea he was going to be the first black president on the planet. 
<laughs> maybe in a delusion. Maybe he was on LSD. I don't know what he was on. Whatever he was, it happened. <laughs> it fucking happened. Yep. And so, who am I to argue with that? It, it happened. <laughs> That's because he dreamed big. Bodacious goals. Goals you cannot accomplish in your lifetime. QLA is based on goals that you cannot accomplish. I'm not selling this book. Goals that you cannot accomplish in your lifetime. Most people get it on torrent. Fine. I didn't even know what torrent was a couple years ago. Get it on torrent. It's not on my site. But this is the Bible. The reason why it looks like a Bible, because I'm telling you what the fucking Lord knows in it. <laughs> this is the definitive, step by step, sentence by sentence, goal by goal, path to super wealth. It's how I turned $820 into $450 million, and it's how my mentees have created tens of billions of dollars. Meatheads just like you. Know-nothings. Losers. Meatheads. Just like every fucking one of you in this audience. We have created $565 billion in 25 years. We have teenage multimillionaires, non-internet, bricks and mortar. We are not here today to learn how to be in the top 2%. We're here to learn how to be in the top two tenths of a percent. This is bullshit. This is the dogma that you've been taught. Most of you would sign a deal, a contract today for the students for a six-figure income and wouldn't even ask what I had to do. We have young people in university making a million dollars a year while they go to school. We're going to show you some of them while they go to school. For those of you that are in your uh, second year of a four-year education, I recommend you drop out of school. <laughs> this is why the university never asked me back twice. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that have followed me on the internet, you know Josh Kim is my teenage, he's not a teenager anymore, but he was, was my teenage phenom, multimillionaire, who now flies around in his jet. He just turned 21 at the Castle Seminar three weeks ago. In three years, he came back after three years because he said he was getting lazy. <laughs> he lives in a penthouse in Las Vegas, has a penthouse in Chicago. He just turned 21. What have you been doing the last three years? I know, you don't have to tell me. And we've created the largest deal in history, $500 billion, Neom, the, cit the tw cit city of the future, the 23rd, 23rd century, that is being built in Saudi Arabia. So we've got from teenage multimillionaires to the biggest deal on the planet. And I had a dream, not like Martin Luther King, I, I don't want to slag that thing off, but I had a dream four or five weeks ago that one of you, maybe not this audience, but one of my devotees uh, came up with a cure for all ills to save the world, the planet. And he put it on open press. Is that what it's called? Open, the thing that's free on the internet. Open source. Open source. He put it on open source. He gave it away. I thought it was a nightmare. Because <laughs> it's certainly a trillion dollar event. And he gave it all away. I had a dream, and I'm, that's my new deal. I had a dream. I did. That somebody found it. one of my mentees. <clears throat> the first step toward success is to take when you refuse to be captive of the environment in which you find yourself. You're here for that reason. And as opposed to the other 500 or 400 people that didn't show up, that's why they're going to complain this weekend about how their internet was too slow, uh, that uh, blah, 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 right? They got caught in traffic, right? But they're not here. So they took the time to sign up, but they didn't come. So you're one step ahead of them. You're here.
And some people are here from South America. Some people are here from uh, India. Some people are here from across the street. <laughs> okay. I, I would, uh, it's not that I rate the people from South America that are here higher than the people that came, walked from their dorm <laughs> here, but it shows some ambition. It shows some accountability. And when you get out in the real world and compete, you'll realize that when you hold yourself to a higher standard, you get more things done. Now, this is what you've learned so far in life. <laughs> this is your sum total of your total knowledge. Shit. That's it. That's it. You can't, unless you... A doctor came up to me at dinner last night and said, hi, my name's Dr. So-and-so. And I thought he was uh, BU. And he says, no. Uh, and he says, I'm speaking. Are you going to be there tomorrow night? And he says, he says, is it at Harvard? He was a Harvard a doctor. I, I didn't figure it out. He says, no, it's at BU. And he goes, oh, I'll see if I can clear my schedule. I don't see him in the audience. So I guess he didn't clear his schedule. OK. But unless you're in one of those um, endeavors that you actually learn something that you're going to use, most of what you learn is shit. Most of what you learn is shit. Now, when I was a kid and my dad and my mom talked crap, I, I, I just listened and didn't kept my, bit my lip, kept my head down, would never tell them they're full of shit. Now the kids hear your parents talk shit. You can go Google and find out my dad's full of shit, my mom's full of shit, uh, you know, OK? Because information is almost instantaneous now. And that's why we have so many young kids that follow QLA that make a lot of money. Now, I don't really think a million a year is a lot of money. But most of you in this room probably do. Consider he's 22 years old. And I told him not to drop out of school. Because if you're getting a degree in computer science, computer science is the future. But for those of you that have a history major, um, um, uh, arts, I'd say it about theology, but I don't want to. I don't want to get. I don't want to get on the wrong side of Allah, Buddha, and God. So I won't say that. But for most of the stuff that you studied, isn't worth a shit. In fact, it is this, and you know it. Now, the good news is there's no compression algorithm for experience. The fact that I've got 50 years experience. And I met all the people that I've met. I've done all the deals. I've been involved in transactions, more than 1,000 transactions. You don't know. Entire corporate finance teams at the big companies in the world have not had 1,000 deal under their belt. Whole teams, 25 guys. This is one guy I stopped counting at 1,500. So I may be saying stuff you don't like, but I'm not saying stuff that doesn't work. There is no compression algorithm for experience. None. Right, Bert? Be you, man. Yes, yeah, so don't, don't brag about it. Put your hand back down. OK. And the system is based on, the QLA system is based on experience, dream team, et cetera, et cetera. The dream team and mentors and mentees, I didn't invent. I'm old, but I'm not this old. They've been doing mentees and mentors for more than a 1,000 years. Some of you have had mentors. Unfortunately, most of your role models are your parents. Just think about that. I asked the audience, and I don't want to embarrass the audience, how many that have children in this room, don't raise your hand would want your kids to grow up and be just like you. If your parents were so fucking smart, how come they turned you out? And we're going to talk about love doesn't get the job done. I wish it did. I wanted to be a priest as a little boy. You're going to believe it, which is true. I did want to be a priest. If love got the job done, we wouldn't be having all the problems we've got. Love doesn't get the job done. I'm a first generation Mexican whose mother and grandmother swam across the Rio Grande River illegally in 1924. I'm first generation.
I, so I talk from both, both sides of the continuum. Wealthy side now, poverty stricken side, illegal immigrant. My mother didn't uh, get naturalized until she was 32 years old and I would have been about 10 then. So I know what it's like. It's hard for anybody to believe that I was poor, but I was. And life is not a journey. It's only a journey if you're a retard, and I, if anybody in the audience has retarded children, I don't mean it that way. You're fucking retarded. <laughs> Life doesn't have to be a fucking journey. Life is a process. You find somewhere, somebody that is where you want to be now, and you model it, you mimic it, you copy it. If you're a baseball player, you may be too young to know Ted Williams used to be the greatest hitter. He was the only hitter that uh, finished his professional season with a four, over a 400 batting average. If I was going to be a baseball player, and I have no athletic ability whatsoever, I would hire Ted Williams to be my batting coach. The same thing now. You hire the best you can get. You don't just kind of meander through life and go to this and go to that. And that's why I don't believe in most of the books that are written. We've had kids that have come to the seminar that have read over 700 books on personal development. I didn't know there were 700 books on personal development. And at Oxford, in their infinite wisdom, the Oxford kid that was sitting in the front row said, I read 700 books. And then another kid over here said, what would you rather have? Would you have somebody that has read 700 books teaching you or somebody that's done 700 deals? That's a fucking no-brainer, isn't it? Yet. Most of you in this room have read books on personal development. Most of you in this room have read books on finance. Some of you have read books on accounting, right? And what the fuck have you learned? Nothing. Why do you do it? Because it's easy. It's easier to read a book than take action. You've been led to believe wrongfully that reading the book is taking action. It isn't. Pulling the fucking trigger. Just fucking do it. It's taking action. Now this is me in my best attempt to be a cholo in East LA. <laughs> that was taken 25 years ago in front of where my house used to be. And if you can tell, my house was from the chain link fence to the brick wall. It wasn't a very big house, was it? It was 800 square feet. When we were taking that picture, in 1993, there was two drive-by shootings within the neighborhood. And my camera guys jumped under the car. That's where I come from. That's where I live. Rags to riches, we know that story. This is where I lived in 1972 on Wall Street. 14 years later, I think it was, 12 years later, I lived there. I lived in little, they used to call them, uh, when they had no, uh, I, I forget what they call it, but anyway, a little apartment I, I had. I, I, I lived in a place called the Bed Bug, uh, Bedford, but we called it the Bed Bug because cockro cockroaches were that big. We used to sit there and watch our little TV, and we'd see the cockroaches racing back and forth the floor. Six of us in a two-bedroom apartment. And then 12 years, not dissimilar to President Obama, I had a dream that I was going to live in a castle on an island. And 12 years later, I moved in. That's my lovely wife. Some of the cars she buys me that I don't drive, but she likes to buy me cars. Don't you, dear? Yep. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't driven in a long, long time. She got me a Ferrari just recently. I need... I, <laughs> A, should I have AIDS or a Ferrari? I mean, I don't, you know, I don't drive the Bentley, I, a DB9. I don't drive the uh, Aston Martin. I don't drive the Rolls, and I'm certainly not going to drive the Ferrari. So I'm sure she'll get me another car before the year is over. Psychology of the high performer. That's what this is all about. Because your, your benchmark heretofore has been low aspirations based on people that had no aspirations, you didn't raise the, the bench, the bar. Has anybody, no, this is, uh, this, is, uh, this is not a question I want you to answer. 
Does anybody in this room, have they ever attended a seminar where the speaker, ranting and raving, is telling you that everything you've learned heretofore is shit? Has anybody ever attended a seminar where I, what, they weren't trying to sell you something from the back of the room? There's a reason for that. There's also a reason why the schools never asked me back twice. I say that, and I think, well, maybe, maybe they'll ask me back. Maybe Oxford will ask me back. Not likely. I was lucky to get through that one the first time. Maybe, maybe BU, because my, our daughter went here, will ask me. Not likely. The, uh, the more likely to ask Howard Stern. By the way, I have a gripe with Howard Stern. We negotiated for s several weeks about me being on his show. And then somehow he, he found out, he, whatever he found out about me, and he decided uh, not to have me on his show. So I wanted to take this personal opportunity, uh, time to slag him off and say that all the staff are assholes and pricks for jerking me around. <laughs> Most of you have not attained material wealth because you've stayed in your comfort zone. Every family has an aunt, an uncle, a grandfather that went out and lost a family fortune, right? Uncle Harry, crazy Harry, he lost 20,000, 50,000, a million, whatever the number is. Well, that resonates in you, in your brain, your little pea brain. And then you hear another one. Your roommate in college, he's got an Uncle Harry. So pretty soon, the only input that you have is people losing their family fortune. That affects you, i.e., you then live within your comfort zone, i.e., you don't take risks. A tortoise, a turtle, can only move forward when it sticks its head and its feet out. And when it sticks its head and its feet out, it's most vulnerable, right? Biggest risk. Most of you have lived a bubble wrap life. Most of you have been risk averse. Risk averse to the extent there are people beyond my comprehension that get all the way through high school with never been screamed at, never been slapped, never been in a fight, never been reprimanded by their parents. And then look at them. Snowflakes. Snowflakes meaning they melt under pressure. And some parents in this room, if I asked them, why are your kids all fucked up? You can tell me why. I wasn't hard enough on them. I gave them everything on a silver platter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then we get this, we get you. And when I say the world is through, look at you. The reason why the aliens haven't come down and taken us over, what the fuck did it, oh, why? Why, are they gonna learn anything? No. A situation where one feels safe or at ease, the, the, tri the trip is an attempt to take the students out of their comfort zone. Uh, a settled method of working that requires uh, little effort and yields only barely acceptable results. If you stay within your comfort zone, yada, yada, yada. How many of you that have gone to school have been really challenged in school? Three. What do we got, 150 in the room? <laughs> Three. Aren't we going to school to be challenged? Intellectually, right? When I came back from school, after flunking out three times, I came back from the military, almost four years in the military, I went to university. I went to two universities at the same time. I took 26 semester units per semester. Went to two universities simultaneously and graduated with honors. And yet, when I was a kid, they said I was retarded. They stood me in the corner with a dunce cap. Ready? People know what a dunce cap is? You know, okay. And if I turned around, they put me in a closet. Kept me there four, five, six hours. I urinated on myself. I shit my pants until my parents came to pick me up. Now just imagine if that had fucking happened to you. 
but I used it. It's not what happens to you in life, it's how you interpret what happens. I made it make me stronger, tougher, smarter. Most people would just collapse. When I was an athlete, if you could call it that, I had little or no athletic ability. All I remember is I wasn't good enough to be on the varsity team. I played junior varsity baseball. And it's the bottom of the ninth. And we're ahead two to one. The bases are loaded for the other team. And all I could think is, please, God, don't let them hit at the center field. <laughs> they hit at the center field, and I dropped the ball. We lost three to two. That's my athletic prowess I had. When I played football, American football, Coach Roy J, may he rest in, roast in fucking hell wherever he is. <laughs> he says, Pina, you're so fucking slow, you ought to wear the other team's jersey. <laughs> Do you understand what that means? You're such a poor athlete, put the other team's jersey on. You're no fucking good for us. But I kept on going, hitting that line. Boom. You know when they have the uh, tackling uh, exercise, one guy in the middle, and everybody just, I was that guy every motherfucking day. If that had happened to you, I know what you'd do. Some of you would have committed suicide. But it made me stronger. Yes, I'm 6'1", 225, a twisted steel and panther piss at age 73. But I endured all this stuff. Now, kids, this is a, a strange concept, and I call you all kids because I'm either old enough to be your father or grandfather. What would your life have been if you were never afraid of anything? Just think about it. I've told Brian Rose, who some of you know, unfortunately, <laughs> and Brian is one of my more successful mentees, although I don't agree with everything he does, um, your life becomes limitless. Girls, the opposite sex, I won't just say girls now, the, the sex of your uh, desires, because now it's not necessarily the opposite sex, I, I don't give a shit about all that. Uh, whoever you desire becomes more desirable, you to them. People want, people don't lack brains or intelligence, they lack leadership. I'm the alpha male dad that most people never had, and I don't want any more kids, believe me. Sally and I just, you know, I, I, I train about 100 of you a year, and that's about all I can take before I commit suicide. Uh, just imagine dealing with meatheads like you every fucking day, every hour. Meathead after meathead after retard after imbecile after idiot. Just think of that. There's not enough money in the fucking world. But when I started this 25 years ago, I said, I'm going to change it from personal development to financial coaching, and I was going to lead the planet in it. And I do. Why doesn't anybody else talk about numbers? Why are all the blogs, the podcasts, the books, etc., that you bought from these fucking morons never talk about creating any numbers? Because they haven't created any. Now I'm going to tell you a big secret. This is the only secret tip I'm going to say during this talk. Personal development was an invention by W. Clement Stone in the 50s who ran a company called Combined Insurance. He hired a defunct, bankrupt Napoleon Hill for marketing. We got to come up with an idea so our insurance guys can sell more insurance. So they thought, they thought, they thought, they thought, and they came up with the idea. Which one of them came up with it? I don't know which, but W. Clement Stone told me this before he died in 2001. Personal development. You can't measure personal development. The morons will eat it up like ice cream. You can't fucking measure it. How do you measure personal development? You don't, you fucking retards! You cannot measure personal development. And here you are. Now think about that. I don't think too hard because you don't have even that many brain cells. But just if you weren't afraid. Now, success doesn't leave clues. <sighs> Q 
QLA works for not just money. This kid came to me two years ago. He had never finished higher than 20th in university archery. He was on the archery team in Britain. Never finished higher than 20th in any meet he'd ever attended. This is him finishing first in Great Britain a year and a half later. First, the little skinny wimp. Fucking retard. He couldn't even pull the fucking thing back. I didn't realize, you know, they've got 60 pound bows. So he goes and get a 140 pound bow. Well, he doesn't weigh 140 pounds. Finish first. He was firing 50 to 100 arrows. I said, you fire 500 arrows a day for the next year and you'll win. His little arms would quiver. Couldn't get the fucking thing back. Blisters cut through his hands. But he's the champ now. This is better for fat broads cutting weight off like a chainsaw off their big asses. <laughs> this is a Columbia University of Columbia professor. She thinks I'm Jesus Christ. <laughs> we just take that, I got a change of no, no, no. Cut that shit off. <laughs> and, whoops, whoops, I got one too. And this is the one, anemic, sick, triathlon champion now. Hits, hit. Your goal has got to be high standards. I talked to a couple of the kids in financial planning kids here, and I happen to know a lot about financial planning, being one of the forerunners 50 years ago. And most of the kids that go into that, wealth management as it's called now, don't set their standards high enough. You don't want to manage money for people that have two or five or 10 million. You want to manage money for people that have 100, 500, and a billion. But they don't teach you that during the training programs at Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, et cetera, et cetera. Because they realize that only one in 100 is going to attain that goal. And they want 100 of you with 5 million in your book, not one of you with a billion in your book. Whoops. My model is copied, and I give credit to Andrew Carnegie. All I'm doing is what this old fart did 140 years ago. The model is exactly the same. Why doesn't Goldman Sachs, Merle Lynch, etc., use it? Because my model creates almost no fees. And Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan can't live without fees. That's why Goldman Sachs isn't having me speak to their boys. No fees, literally no fees. It's the same thing the old fart did, Andrew Carnegie who comes from Scotland right down the road from us. And that's why nobody teaches it. There's nothing to sell. And if you look at my website, there's only three moving parts. And arguably, there's only one moving part. That's why nobody sells it. It's all free. And if it's free, it's for me. Now, these are some of the, uh, the guys. Remember, success leaves clues. Mr. Carnegie was a hard bastard. <laughs> Vanderbilt was a hard bastard. Henry Ford I was a hard bastard. Rockefeller was a hard bastard. Steve Jobs was a ruthless hard bastard. As Apple CEO Cook regularly begins sending emails at 4.30 in the morning on Sunday, he's a hard bastard. Why are all these guys that changed the world got one thing in common? They're fucking tough as nails. Ruthless. Take no prisoners. And then we got you. A stiff drink and a good fuck and kill most people in this room. I'm ashamed to say. In fact, forget the stiff drink, just a good fuck. And now the flavor of the day is Mr. Musk. I spent a little more time on him because he's smoking joints on Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan, I was on his show. Thank you, Joe, for the opportunity. On April Fool's, he comes out with a tweet. Um, Tesla's going bankrupt, for those of you that remember. It's called self-sabotaging activities. If you think Tesla doesn't need more capital, equity, give me whatever you're smoking. If it's not addicted, give me some of that shit. Are you that fucking stupid?
The company has conducted an experiment in how far it can push. Oh, excuse me, not Tesla. I got ahead of myself. This is Amazon Bebos, who's also a ruthless bastard. White collar workers to get them to achieve the ever expanding ambitions. <laughs> it is the most successful vis a vis market capitalization company in the world, Amazon. He's ruthless. Success leaves clues. What do I have to fucking tell you? He's not a weenie like you. Now we're at Elon Musk. Got hit myself. Okay. Elon. We've grown fucking soft, Elon Musk, after Vance noted that only hundreds of people were working at Tesla's headquarters on a Saturday. My proceeds from PayPal acquisition were 80, 180 million, blah, 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 blah. Then I had to borrow money for rent. These guys, myself included, are all in. If they believe in what they're doing, they put all their money at risk, which I have several times, not in recent years. Uh, SpaceX worker reveals a brutal company motto, uh, motto helped him survive all nighters working for Elon Musk. Notorious workaholic Elon Musk is so tied to his office that he's been known to sleep on the floor. I slept on the floor. Ford slept on the floor. Jobs slept on the floor. Gates slept on the floor. Success leaves clues, you fucking weenies. I still work 50, 60 hours a week. And I haven't had it work in 35 fucking years. SpaceX, wherever, blah, blah, blah. So it should come as no surprise that employees at his companies also work long hours. <clears throat> I frequently did 12 hour days and pulled many all nighters <coughs> at the office. Former SpaceX employee, blah, 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 blah. You're your own slave driver. The culture at the company included working far in excess of 40 hours. We would sometimes joke and say, uh, what are you working part time when somebody was leaving at 7 o'clock and he only put 50, 60 hours in? But despite the heavy workload, uh, said the culture to work around the clock was precipitated by employees, not Musk. Because one, success is infectious. And most of you have never been on any successful team. High performance, high powered. Some of you have, may have participated in athletics when it's a winning team. You can't wait to get to practice. Now, I'm not talking about myself because that wasn't me. Can't wait to get to practice. Practice all the time. Virtually everything I teach, athletes understand. My mentality is that of a samurai. I would rather commit seppuku than fail. Why do you think Joe Rogan brought the samurai sword out for the interview in Joe, uh, with uh, Elon? Because Elon would rather kill himself than fail. And if you remember, he took the sword, he pulled it out of the sheath, he looked at it. I would not have been surprised if he didn't turn it and fucking gut himself. Is success in any format that important to anybody in this audience? Don't raise your hand. I would have taken a bullet for my companies 20 years ago. I wouldn't even hesitate. How bad, there's a bebop uh, motivating guy, a black guy, bebop preacher, what's his name? Yeah, he says, if you don't want success like you want air in your fucking lungs, then you ain't going to be successful. All nighters. Okay, no, and then he complained. No friends, nothing. Uh, Elon Musk reveals a lonely 24 hours in his bed working at Tesla on his birthday. <laughs> oh, terrible. At an interview in the New York Times, he's talking about 120 hour weeks. This is the way it is. But the rewards are overwhelmingly worth it. But it's not for everybody. My teenage phenom and Josh doesn't like me calling him a teenager anymore because now he's 21. This is at the castle. He came back to the castle seminar page just like everybody else because he thought he was getting sloppy. He was getting sloppy. And, he made, and it's all online, his speech, etc. And then the, his roommate three years ago is this kid, a million dollar a year man, and he's still a graduate student. Jan. Buy business, sell business, leadership. That's what QLA does, and that's what, unfortunately, most 
not all, but almost all schools of business don't do. Now, we're fortunate that we're considered in a competitive environment. Some of you that have traveled a long ways aren't in a competitive environment. But this model for success works 1,000% in Britain, in Canada, in Australia, uh, most of Europe, some parts of South America, uh, China, Russia, every place. If you're willing to put in 100 hours a week. If you're not, metaphorically speaking, the, my lawyers tell me, go like this. Eat a revolver. Switzerland, we don't need that. Now, I've been screaming for five or 10 years that interest rates are the lowest in 5,000 years. They're giving away money. Do you understand the concept of give, literally giving away money? The lowest rates in 5,000 years. Now, I used to ask, I don't anymore because it's too debilitating, how many of you have pitched a bank in the last month? How many of you pitched a bank in the last three weeks? How many of you pitched a bank in the last two weeks, one week? How many of you pitched a bank today? Now, it's funny how, except for two hands, the hands that went up are all my mentees. I don't know how much longer it's going to last. We are in the longest bull market in history. About six weeks ago, I think, five weeks ago. The longest bull market in history. So your parents are saying, be careful, but don't get in now. Don't, don't go borrow money now. But unless interest rates go up 500 basis points, that means 5%, it's still like stealing money. It's still like stealing money. You're robbing the banks without a gun and a mask. What are you going to tell your children? What are you going to tell your grandchildren 20 years from now? Daddy, Grandpa, what were you doing during the greatest transformation of wealth in the history of the fucking planet? Other than having your thumb up your fucking ass. What are you going to tell them? Oh, I was thinking about it. I was spreadsheeting it. I'm proud to say I haven't done a spreadsheet in 10, 15 years. Go read another book. Go listen to another, uh, read a blog, listen to a podcast. <sighs> ben Franklin's. Oh, I get, it's sexual experience when I look at that slide. <laughs> <laughs> now, whoops, God damn it. That's what I want you to be, but this is non-PC, isn't it? <laughs> I want you to be, instead of cocaine, I want you to be snorting up bills. Now, most of you have been taught this is the money scale. Money is dirty. That's not for us. Money's not important. That's not for us. There's other values more than important than money. So no wonder you don't get to the top of the money tree. And who taught you this shit? Your parents. Some of you still believe it. I can see the look on your face. You poor retards. <laughs> I didn't know what a million dollars was. I told, um, I was telling the, the financial planning guys last night at dinner. Uh, in 1967, when I was overseas, I would go into the officers club. And everybody's buying, some guy's buying drinks, a captain. And uh, I said, well, what's, what's John buying drinks? He said, he just inherited $1,400,000. And I asked the guy who was with us, write that on a napkin for me. I I'm not bullshitting. Write it on a napkin for me. One comma, four zero zero, comma, zero zero. I didn't know how many zeros was in a million. I'm 22 years old. I'm a young second lieutenant. And I said, well, let's drink up. Let's drink as much of that million bucks up as we possibly can. Drink, drinks were 35 cents at the uh, uh, Rhine Main Air Force Officers Club in, in Germany. Later, a few months later, I get an award from the United States Army Europe 
uh, if I came up with an idea to save a couple million dollars in the European command. I don't, it was bullshit. Uh, by accident, I did it. I'm getting an award, and they gave me a $50 war bond, 50 bucks. Uh, and if I kept it 30 years, it was worth 50 bucks, but it was only worth like $6.50 then. So General Vaughn, a two-star general who ultimately became a three-star general, we're at the officers club and he says, we ought to have Danny, which was what I was called, him buy drinks. I said, well, I didn't get the money yet, general. And then he turned to me, he said, Danny, I bet you with a mind like yours, you could get rich in the civilian world. A light bulb went off in my head. The first time I ever thought about getting rich. And then General Atterbury, a one-star general, said, yeah, I bet you you can make a lot of money, Danny. I was out of the Army six months later. And I've been raping, pillaging, and plundering every fucking since. But if I hadn't won that award, and if General Vaughn hadn't said, Danny, you could probably get rich in the civilian world, I would have been a career Army officer. Tommy Franks, four-star general, and I went to OCS together. And uh, I used to say, if Tommy can be a four-star general, I'll be a ten-star general. <laughs> no disrespect, Tommy. But the, I, didn't, I wasn't focused on money. I'd never done anything high performance other than becoming an officer. And when you become an officer, they make you Congress, US Congress, makes you an officer and a gentleman by the act of Congress. And that was a big deal to me since I've been thrown in jail five times. I've done all kinds of ugly things. And so I've, I've lived my life that ever since. I've lived my life that ever since. The first method for estimating the intelligence of a ruler is to look at the man he surrounds himself with. Now, if I were going to judge you or you or you by the guys you hang with, the guys you fucking chill with, I think you're a retard. <laughs> You hang and chill. Bill Gates does not chill. He does not go to the Super Bowl. Steve Jobs didn't hang. Why do you? You hang out with monkeys. A lot of resemblance here. You know, you become a circus. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Most of you would be embarrassed to tell me who your five closest buddies are. We see some of the ladies going, no, not me. No, I'm proud of who I hang with. Well, you're the delusional lady. <laughs> see, this is the only religious thing I say during this, this talk. I believe we were put on the earth to be all we can be, not a fraction thereof. All. There's nobody in this room that puts their hand on their heart and says, all my life I've been all that I can be. This is all I can be. If that's the case, then you ought to blow your brains out, metaphorically speaking. Then why are we here? To chill? We were up in um, uh, Verona, Italy waiting for a glass of wine. We climbed this uh, Roman ruins. Uh, we were there to go on the Orient Express, the train, and we waited 45 minutes to get served. And Sally turns to me and says, I think this is chilling. <laughs> 45 minutes to get a fucking drink. I was just about to choke the girl, <laughs> which I've been accused of doing, not recently, but accused. <laughs> if that's chilling, and I don't carry cell phones. I don't use cell phones. I don't carry, you know, I'm out of contact. I have three assistants that handle my life. And my life is divided up. I do not do anything. I delegate everything except wiping my ass. And in Asia, I didn't wipe my ass even. <laughs> I delegate everything. I don't do anything. I don't know how to do anything when a young girl was coming. You want me to love it? No, I don't want to. I'm not going to touch any of that shit. No, no, it's all right, fine. If it doesn't work, I'll just, I don't need it. It's fine. I can do it without the slides. I delegate everything in my life. Similar to Steve Jobs only wore black, remember? Zuckerberg now is kind of copying that. But I, I and Sally picks all my clothes. She dresses me. This suit is a $50 billion man suit. The pinstripes say $50 billion man. 
I mean, the, I don't do anything except think about how to make you retard better. <laughs> you know why I have a sore back? 25 years of carrying you fat asses across the goal line. <laughs> 25 years. And not everybody deserves to be alive. So let's get that fucking thing straight right now. And if you think that, you're retarded. Some of you should have rolled down the inside of your fat mama's leg. <laughs> and that's a God's truth. Whoops. Be all you can be, OK. Now, I am mostly titanium and steel parts. This is me. Artificial shoulders, artificial collarbone, artificial knees, full knees, artificial hip. I've been busted up over the years. I do a lot of extraordinary things. Not the least of which getting run over by a buffalo 25 years ago. But I'm always pressing the envelope, physically and mentally and financially. I.e., we started the boxing ring, which, uh, as I told some of you in the beginning, 95% of everybody thought it was a great idea. 5% said that I was inhumane, like the gladiators and the lions and all kind of bullshit. And I've continued to press myself. Now, this is a, a 2014, we're in New Zealand, and I'm, I, I see a poster about um, bungee jumping. And I said, oh, Sally, I gotta do that. And Sally says, turn around. And it's right here, this is where the bungee jumps. So I gotta do that. So the next morning, I, uh, I'm in line, there's about 50, 60 millennials, kind of like you guys. And they're all saying, the winds were gusting 40 to 60 miles an hour, and you can't jump. So all the millennials are going, oh, when that fucking wind dies down, I'm going to jump that motherfucker. I'm going to jump. <laughs> They're all dancing around. So I wait about 10 minutes. I take a $100 bill. I walk up to the head of the line. I said, don't you think that the wind's died down now? <laughs> he said, I believe it is. It has, sir. <laughs> I jump. OK? I come back. These guys are still saying, when that, well, did you jump? Uh, <laughs> I didn't know the wind died down. Uh, but when it dies down the next time, I'm going to jump that motherfucker. I believe with all my heart, some of those guys are still in line waiting. <laughs> and then one of you <coughs> introduced me to the stratosphere in Las Vegas, where you jump 855 feet off a tower. And I was well, shit, I got to do that. Unfortunately, I hurt myself when I jumped, because I just had my knees put in. And when you jump, to land like that. I didn't land like that. I landed favoring this leg, and I did a, on the YouTube, we cut that part out when I fell into the ground. <laughs> that, that, that part we don't show. But Sally, Sally said, I'd go on, why don't you watch how these guys are landing, Dan? No, I don't want to, I don't want to lose focus. I only want to go up to the top and watch them jump. Because I knew that if I watched them landing and some of the people getting hurt, that I, I didn't want any negative thoughts running through my head. But it, it, it's a great rush. It's a great rush. And, um, and there I am, see, this is after that, they stood me up. After they stood me up and they scraped me up off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and the little girl saying, are you all right? Are you all right? I'm fine, I'm fine. Forget everything you've known about creating wealth. Your days are numbered, time is very short. Now, some of you, if you're like most audiences, and I assume that you, some of you are, are suffering a thing called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is all your life you've been taught this, these facts. And I'm giving you a whole new set of facts. And you're having trouble meshing the two. That's why I showed you the pile of shit earlier. You just got to flush almost everything you've ever learned. Almost any, everything you've ever learned about creating wealth, now, I'm not telling you not to believe in Allah, Buddha, God, no, 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 no. I'm not telling you to, you know, be, not be honest, none of that. But the stuff that you've, all the books that you've read, all the blogs, all the podcasts, it's all horseshit. It's just all horseshit, because it's not that difficult. 85% of your financial success is due to your personality. Now, get this, not what you learned in school. 85%. And you don't have to be an alpha male. 
Only 2% of us are alpha males. Most of the high performance, Steve Jobs was not an alpha male. Bill Gates is not an alpha male. Warren Buffett is not an alpha male. I can go down the list. Donald Trump is an alpha male. Steve Ballmer from, um, um, took over from Bill Gates is an alpha male. But most of the people are not alpha males. So don't be dissuaded that you have to be an alpha male to do this, because you don't. Um, now, it's not like the world is perfect. We have problems everywhere. Everywhere. The same people that taught these kids taught you. I drove by a college today and I yelled, boo. 35 people went to the hospital. 734 needed crisis counseling. 429 needed a safe area or room. And uh, classes were canceled for a week. There are universities that I've spoken at that have safe floors. The third floor in the physics building in Krakow University has a safe floor. If life gets too tough for them, they go to that floor to chill. <laughs> the Air Force Academy has safe cards. When they're, when, when, yeah, we have, we have a Naval Academy guy, so he said that they pull when they're being beat up too much. Enlisted men going through boot camp have safe cards that they pull. We're lucky we don't go to war with fucking Russia. They'll eat our lunch. They're going to eat us alive. We're lucky. There are no safe cards in life. I tell the kids all the time, if we were at war, we'd all be dead. See, you're used to making mistakes, and nothing happens. For the few of you in the military in here, you know mistakes can cost lives. If your adult child needs a safe space to avoid offensive words, you failed as a parent. <laughs> you failed. <laughs> My, our kids are millennials, but they're not, I mean, you'd think that they were Godzilla, Attila the Hun, and Genghis Khan compared to the other millennials. Our daughter is me with a skirt. She's a rough bitch. <laughs> She's a rough girl. Daddy, why do you want to go? If she were standing here, she'd say, my daddy treats everybody the same, like shit. Whether you're the pope, although I do cut the pope some slack. That's not quite accurate. Whether you're uh, you know, whoever, I mean, I treat everybody the same because I hold everybody accountable. If you tell me you're going to do something, young lady, if you don't do it, I'll rip your head off and shit down your neck. <laughs> I'll be all over you like, like, like a cheap suit. We were at a, um, where were we? Uh, oh, uh, the re um, um, preview for uh, uh, Brian Rose's movie that just happened a week or so ago. Brian's wife comes up to me and says, Dan, you know, there's a lot of people that want to come up and talk to you, but they're afraid of you. Fine, fuck them. I don't want to talk to them anyway. <laughs> but I'm the same 100% of the time, from the time I get up to the time I go to sleep. Now, for the guys in the room, put your hands up like this and look at your left hand. Don't, don't tell me. Just look at your left hand. And if your finger, if this finger isn't longer than this finger, you squat the pee. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay. This isn't Dan's measurement. This is proven. It's a testosterone test. Some people ask why I got, and I tried to gain 10, I gained 10 pounds over when we went, took uh, for my birthday uh, a few weeks ago, and we went on the Orient Express, which is a tremendous experience if you can afford the sweets. If you can only be in the rooms, the rooms are about this big. And you don't have a toilet. You have to share a toilet with 40 people. OK? So, but, uh, so I'm eating, drinking, gaining weight. 
uh, because I have I had my bloods, my uh, physical, uh, three or four times a year, and my blood panels came back. I have the blood panels of a 30-year-old, and they have a testosterone of a 15-year-old. Testosterone's off the chart. I mean, literally. Testosterone, three to 800 normal. 800 is, mine is 15 to 1800. Yes. And it starts with that hand. Now, I didn't even know this. One of you sent me this test. Of course, he had a hand that was. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the snowflake test. I'm not going to ask you how many of you have taken the snowflake test on my site. 95% of the snowflake tests have come back snowflakes. 95%. Now, one of the questions, I'm paraphrasing it, if somebody calls your mama a whore, what do you do? And then they have uh, uh, different answers. The most common answer I get from you kids is I would try to ascertain where he was coming from if he had a bad day. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Somebody calls your old lady a hoe. So you're going to try to figure out whether he's a, had a bad day or not. <laughs> now where I come from, there's only one way that can end, and it's ugly. Either he's in the hospital or I'm in the hospital. I got a cousin, Ronnie, God love him. He stabbed the guy, when we were 15 years old, stabbed the guy 17 times for telling him his girlfriend had a fat ass back in 1961. By the grace of God, Ronnie couldn't stab shit well, the guy didn't die. So they come up and say, well, what does it take? Is he going to spit in your mother's face? Or grab her by the tit? Or what does it do to invoke some kind of action out of you? Fucking weenies. 95%. And the success test only has a 95% accuracy whether you're going to be successful or not. Only 95%. It's really 99, but the lawyers tell me I can only say 95. Take the success test. Most of you ought to blow your brains out, metaphorically. <laughs> now, 30 years ago, men had 118 pounds pressure in a handshake. Women had 108. 118, 108. 1986. 2016, men had 94, and women had 100. All the tests for masculinity have gone down. Sperm count, baby births, blah, 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 blah. When I tell you we're through, we're through, not just because I got a wild hair up my ass. I'm not going to go through all the scientific bullshit. Oh, that's the, speaking of science. I've got I've, uh, went viral when I said that the global warming is a farce, and I, I took a lot of heat about it. Pun intended. I took a lot of heat, and um, but you know how many people have been to the North and South Pole teams since they were discovered by Amundsen? You know how? Have anybody got a guess? Ten. Ten. You're right. And Sally and I are the 11th. Uh, and all these cocksuckers talking about global, they, they don't know what global warming is. All the talking heads. Sally and I are bipolar because we've been to both poles. <laughs> we've been married on both poles. And all these people, and that's why when I, when I, when I was there uh, for 2011, and the scientists, the mad scientists, are showing us all this shit, and they take cores of ice. <laughs> And they're saying uh, uh, 20,000 years ago it was this warm. 55,000 years ago it was 2% two, um, 2 warmer um, um, centigrade. 55,000 years ago on the planet. I said, stop, 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 stop. 55,000 years ago it was 2% warmer. 2 degrees warmer. He says, yeah, yeah, everybody knows. It's, it's cyclical. It's climate change. It's not global warming. Anyway, then I went to go to the North Pole five years later, four years later. We asked the Russian scientists, same thing. And when we ask them about global warming, everybody laughs. They laugh at the South Pole, they laugh at the North Pole. 
It's a load of shit. I'm just jealous Al Gore thought of it and I didn't. It's a load of shit, just like that pile. OK, we're not going to go through the test. If love got the job done, we already talked about that. We know that. Now, how many know who this woman is? I don't know who she is. One of you sent me this, and then I verified it, fact check, pulled it down on Google. She's on one of the talk shows. And my friend came back from the bathroom. He was like, she threw a drink in a guy's face for being fresh at a bar. He goes into the bathroom, comes back, he had urinated himself. And she's making fun of him on national television. Now, I've had drinks thrown in my face. But as, normally, I did something. Right. <laughs> you know, this guy, you know, so she, I don't know what he did. Most people realize that masculinity is a dying art. When we were in Poland, hot, hot girls at the school. And uh, all the hot girls sat over here, and the rest of the retards sat over here. And I said, well, we, 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 we let those guys touch us. Now, the fact that they all look like weenies, they were weenies. One of my, uh, two of my disciples have these uh, dating things where you go to learn how to get laid and make friends and date, and whatever they're called, you know? Jason Capital gets paid between $40 and $6,000 a month from meatheads just like you how to get laid. $6,000 a month! As Joe Rogan said, that's a fucking mortgage payment. He wants me to go on tour with him around the world. He said, we could get $50,000 a month if you come with me. I'm not interested. I certainly don't want that to be my legacy. <laughs> Especially we have a daughter. I have a daughter. And I do have double standards. I'm guilty, so just, I do have double standards. I just, you know, I'm guilty. So I don't even try to make, a, you know, make excuses for it. I do. What my sons, our sons can do, our daughter can't. And when she, she was growing up, she said, Daddy, Daddy, the boys did it when they were 19. I'm 19 now. I said, I don't give a shit. They're boys, you're not. Of course, this didn't go over that well with her. And uh, the, um, but. Now, kids, look at that slide. And I used to take votes, which one you could relate to the most. But the, here you are with your dreams. You got to go through your relatives, your friends, the pessimists in the world, your own guilt, fear, society in general to get your goals. No wonder not many of you do. Some of you can relate to one more than others. Most of you in this room have been fucked up by your families. And then your friends. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And then just general society. For the youngsters in the room, they say, oh, don't be in a hurry. You've got the rest of your life. That's bullshit. Just, that's a loser, 35, 45-year-old telling you he's a loser because he didn't do it when he was 25. This is the slide that um, Brian Rose came to Jesus with. He had a lot of knowledge, but he had no experience. And I connected the dots for him. What this book does, and I'm not selling the book, you can get it on Torrent. This book does is connects the dots. We have eight gigs of free material on my site. Eight gigs. I don't know if that's a lot or a little, but it's eight gigs, all free. These eyes have seen stuff that your little bubble wrap eyes have never seen. I came, this was my dad. This is your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a difference, don't you think? My dad saved the world. Generation saved the world. What did your dad do? I came from Jacksonville, Florida. This is where I was born. This is 1945. I was born right at the end of the war. This is what my neighborhood literally looked like, alligators, in Jacksonville. This is how you used to get across town in Jacksonville, 1945. 
I've seen Europe bombed out. When I went back there in 1950-51 as a uh, dependent of my father, this is was what uh, uh, Rotterdam, Amsterdam, and Frankfurt looked like five years after the war ended. You've never seen that. The closest you, and I'm not making light of the hurricanes and all the devastation that's been done, but the closest you come is watching on television a house flooding, which is sad and it's awful. It shouldn't happen. How'd you like to be trudging through this shit? Corpses still in the, in, in, in the, uh, in the gravel. One of my mentees, who's so ashamed of being a snowflake, he's French, lives in Paris, they go to a monthly thing where they beat each other. He's so ashamed. We have adults come to me, how do I make my snowflake son act like he had a pair? And I said, well, look at you. You don't have a pair, so how are you going to get him to have a pair? Most of your parents are worthless weenies. When I was growing up, contrary to what you were growing up, I'm 13 years old, and I'm wrestling with lions. That's me and Jackie the Lion, Jackie the Lion from the MGM, Metro Golden Mayor. That's the first line, Jackie. So I'm not afraid of animals to this day. I'm wrestling. My mother's over here out of camera screaming and yelling, afraid that the lion is going to eat me. And then fast forward 40, 50 years, there we are with tigers. You can see Sally in the background there. Yes, people get hurt on these things. Yes, people get killed on these things. That's why there's only three people in that picture. <laughs> and Sally and I went trucking with the lions a few years ago. Because I'm continuing to push the envelope. I never want to be comfortable doing anything. Your, your measurement of comfort is whether you're going to have a cafe latte with one or two, uh, you know, sweet and lows in it. And there's Sally and I and um, Rhonda trekking with the silverback gorillas. And that's not a close-up camera. That's right. With, that's Charlie. I was naive enough to think that he would remember us two years later, but he didn't. He remembered Sally. The gorillas like blondes. <laughs> blondes do have more fun. <laughs> But I continue to push myself. I've had to work in 35 years. Some of the kids have asked me, how do you get up in the morning, Mr. Pena? I haven't had to work in 35 fucking years. And would I start coaching and mentoring again? No. This is the worthless, most thankless job that was ever created on the planet, trying to teach retards how to have self-esteem. I would never do it again, never. But when I do something, I'm the best. Now see, I look at you, I know what you can be. You see yourself as a mealy mouth little mouse or a kitty cat. I unleash the beast in you. Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. This is a school that Sally and I support in uh, Rhonda, oh, cute little kids. <clears throat> now, unless you've got a dirty nappy or, or diaper, kids, when they're three, four, five, six, eight months, are normally happy. Unless they've got a dirty diaper, diaper, right? And then they're still happy, happy, and then they're still happy, and then uh, they get a little older, they're still happy, and then three years old, they're still happy. And they're still happy. They're still happy to six, seven, maybe eight. Then something happens. <laughs> Self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years of life. Self-esteem is built the first seven or eight years of life. Okay, who are you around the first seven or eight years of life? Mama, maybe daddy if he's not working. Maybe a, a retard grandparent. Maybe an older brother or sister, right? Isn't that who you're around the first six, seven, eight years? Okay, kids are not programmed for success. Kids don't do what you tell them to do, they do what they see you do. It's easier to build strong children than prepare broken men. Now, 
I'm not recommending you do this, but for those of you that might have a pair, go home when next time you're alone with your mom, because your dad will lie to you. Ask him three things. Was I wanted? Which means, was I an accident? But don't use that word, because that word doesn't go too well with the moms, okay? Number two. Do you want me to grow up to be just like you? And number three, why didn't you do any better than you did? And I can tell you the answer. I did the best I knew how. You don't know what you don't know. So what they're really saying is that they're excused for fucking you up. My father, rest in peace. 91 when he died. Uh, I'm getting some big award. Bullshit, bullshit. Uh, because that and $5 might buy me a coffee at Starbucks. Uh, and he's being interviewed by CBS television. He says, aren't you very proud of Mr. Uh, your son? He says, yes, I'm very proud of my son. But I had nothing to do. My son is successful not because of me, but in spite of me. My son's success is not because of me, but in spite of me. The school, dean of the school of business, getting back to Obama's goals, okay? Dr. Teeter, you know Danny Pena, Dan, uh, Dan Pena a long time, since I've known Danny a long, long time. What have you seen the difference in him in the last 25, 30 years? And she looks right into the camera again, says the only thing that's changed with Danny is his accomplishments caught up with his big fucking mouth. Now, this is the dean of the motherfucking school of business. I've just been nominated the most distinguished alumni in the history of the cocksucking school. And she says, my accomplishment was caught up with my big fucking mouth. I never heard her say a swear word in all the years I knew her. So I talk like Obama. I talk shit. I talk shit. I, I didn't have to get cracked up on it to talk shit, but I mean, I talk shit. <coughs> Some people will never like me, and I will never give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the world will not value me until I value myself. Confidence is not, they will like me. Confidence is, I'll be fine if they don't. This is one of my... He's not a teenager anymore. That's Taha, my, my Muslim brother, in his back of his rolls, dropped out of the University of Glasgow pre-med. Be a rock and roller. Not, I don't mean rock. See, that has a different connotation in America. Now, I don't mean rock guy. I mean uh, uh, businessman, entrepreneur. Taha. His mother hates me. Hates me. <laughs> because he dropped out of medical school. James Goins, active duty Air Force, who was from bumfuck Mississippi, two steps ahead of uh, the local sheriff to put him in jail. Met him in Hawaii uh, five, six years ago. He's going to Wharton in the fall, next fall, University of Pennsylvania. He's also rolling up real estate and working at Tiffany's so he can learn how to charm women. I says, instead of taking uh, the course, just sell jewelry to women, and you'll learn how to charm them. Matt Popus, teenage multimillionaire. Do the kids look arrogant? This kid started QLA when he was 13, made 100 grand when he was 13. They're entrepreneurs of the year in Australia, 30, uh, top 30, under 30, cocky fuckers. They look cocky, don't they? They turned down 20 million for 5% of their company. Three or four years ago, I told them no. They did it anyway. 20 million for 5%. Oxford kid, hundreds of millions he's made. And then the current phenom, Josh Kim, who came to me when he was 17, who's now 21. And this was his goal before he came to me, a la Obama. 
to buy this part of an island in Hawaii and build this on it since he's 15. He's already got the house priced, 45 million. Now, when you were 15, other than jacking off on your computer, what the fuck were you doing, boys? This is him now. I didn't even know about this fucking plane. One of you sent me the picture. He didn't, he didn't share this with me, because I would have told him he was a meathead. Now, we had a contest a few years ago called Smell the Leather. Some of you may have entered it. Go to a Ferrari dealership, sit in the car, see how it is, go to a Rolls dealership, go to a million dollar, multi-million dollar house, blah, blah, blah. I have 50,000 followers, so to speak, and the winner would get a free set castle seminar, which is 20 grand. Out of 50,000, how many people do you think entered the contest? No one. Eight. Low self-esteem, eight out of 51,600 or something like that. Their parents said, oh, don't waste your time. You can't win anyway. You're just low trailer trash. Whether you're Mexican trailer trash, black trailer trash, you know, uh, and you wonder why you are where you are. Looking at the house, because this is my house. This is the top view for the house. This is uh, Will and uh, Smith's house. And these are houses. I had a, uh, big properties here in Boston. I had to look hard. They're not, you know, they're not just running. You'd think there'd be a lot more expensive houses here, but there aren't. These are some of the houses, 8 million, basically 9 million. And they're mostly apartments. This is Boston. So you do have them here. Is that where it is? Brooklyn? Yeah, about a lot. OK, OK. The, uh, but if you believe, if you believe in yourself, I had to go on Obama again, Obama. Uh, I had a dream. I'm running down Torrance Boulevard, 1983, and I had just looked at a magazine called The Rob Report, which I recommend that you all subscribe to. And it had uh, castles on islands. And, the, uh, and I said, uh, I'm going to buy a castle on an island. That was March 83. I moved into the Guthrie Castle, September 184. Had no way to pay for it. Didn't have a, well, I had a pot to piss in. But um, 15 months later, was that 15 or 17 months? Anyway, from March to September 1 the next year. So I had an Obama moment. And I wasn't even cracked up. I had a dream. So even though I make fun of these guys that have a dream, but I've had it myself. But if you don't have a dream, guess what? It can't come true. And you're never going to exceed your highest expectation. You will never, for those of you that want to make a million dollars, you're never going to make a million and one. Success is like being pregnant. Everyone says congratulations, but nobody knows how many times you got fucked. <laughs> You have three million pores in your body. Three million. I've been fucked in every one of them at least twice in a bad way. I have a young mentee in the room who just recently got his first, um, and I'm not making light of rape and shit like that, but, but basically recently almost got his first financial raping here recently. Um, and I have a lot of scar tissue because, you know, if I allowed people to disappoint me, I'd never get out of bed in the morning. Because you know, when you've got 100 kids, I manage basically 100 portfolios. The kids that I'm, because after you come to the seminar, I then mentor you free for a year. And so your life becomes my life, as Sally would attest to. And they're not always happy times. <laughs> and uh, although some guys and gals, I don't have a problem with. Uh, but uh, some of them are pains. Uh, it's like uh, I got hemorrhoids because they're always stepping on their own dick, metaphorically speaking. They're engaging in self-sabotaging activities because they have saw their parents engage in self-sabotaging activities. They don't know any better. We're born limitless. We have limiting beliefs, mostly from your parents. We're, we're not gaining emotional baggage we have. What we learn can be unlearned. Stay aware, um, aware of limiting beliefs. 
of others, get in touch with your emotions, get mentors. That's what the system's based on. Now, <laughs> what the fuck happened? Oh my God. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> of course, now, we've had people, you want to do this, that's, your, that's fine. But we have limits who we let into the castle seminar. <laughs> that's why we asked for a picture, a photograph. Okay? I don't care if you're transgender, I mean, none of that, but I don't give a shit. As long as you don't impose it on anybody else. But if you look like this, you can't come. <laughs> you can't come. I will strip naked in front of you. Okay, thank you. Okay, I can't get a job because Trump is a racist. <laughs> now, I didn't see any of these at BU. Is, uh, BU is not the kind of place that the people run around like this. And then, of course, this is a, the, uh, Sally and I were in Amsterdam. <laughs> We were in Amsterdam, remember? And I couldn't believe it when the, uh, the parade, we were in Amsterdam a few years ago. And um, everybody, I don't give a shit what you do in the, your own privacy, I don't care. I don't care how you dress, you just can't come to my place that way, that's fine. Now see, uh, they see now, how, do we have any southerners in the room? I ain't had so much fun since the hogs ate my baby brother, I'm telling you. <laughs> I had so much fun since the hogs ate my baby brother. That's a level. Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Uh, Petty, I've seen your videos, and I know you um, advocate focusing on the healthcare and technology industries. Correct. Uh, I'm just curious if you could maybe elaborate on that. Elaborate on what, you know? Well, if you were just getting started, I guess what, what specifically... Uh, what specific type of business would you, you know, let's say Monday morning you're looking, you're going to do your first deal. What specific business would you well, like to Well, I've said health care for 35 years because people like me don't want to die. So, at the, you know, we go from diapers to diapers, I'm told. I'm never going to wear a diaper. But anyway, they tell me we go from diapers to diapers. Okay, so assisted living is at the bedpans. Assisted living is at the bottom end of health care. The upper end of health care is... Acquiring, business, uh, acquiring businesses that are making new uh, uh, hearts, new valves, uh, uh, acquiring uh, hospitals, uh, acquiring uh, dental practices, acquiring veterinary, acquiring nurseries. Uh, but the one absolute necessity for the QLA is a motivated seller. Without a motivated seller, you're pissing in the wind. Motivated means, now this is, I'm teased in the industry by this, but it's almost true. She just had a stroke, and she's in a wheelchair. He's spitting up blood from emphysema. That's a motivated seller. And there are people like that, that are motivated sellers. So, you, so healthcare technology, which uh, the... Um, Right now, cybersecurity is the hottest industry on the fucking planet. Cybersecurity is the hottest. You can't get it. I mean, uh, if this was a cybersecurity deal, I could fry eggs on this fucking book. Why? Because every time Rocket Man in North Korea rattles his sword, or uh, uh, the guy in Syria, or Ayatollah, blah, blah. Cybersecurity. There are 25,000 cybersecurity firms within a 50-mile radius of Washington, D.C. 25,000. So, so if you have to pick one, what, what one thing would you go after? Healthcare. Healthcare. Assisted living is Assisting easiest. living. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. Thank you. Ma'am, I mean. Thank you. Yes, sir. I just wanted to say that it's an honor to meet you. Thank you. Uh, the manner in which I found you was not typical. And... I know. That. I didn't meet you in a bar or anything, did I? <laughs> well, maybe that was the first time. Maybe okay. the second okay. time that I found you online. But uh, I was in, in quite a state, and uh, a friend of mine who's spiritual stated that the rant that I screamed that night pulled you up. <laughs> um, and it was fitting because you have a similar personality, what I was going through that night. But it's a cut the crap type of attitude that I had. You're right. We've been learning a crap, a pile of crap. So I've done real estate and a lot of different things, but I don't have the tools. So my question is this. 
I'm tied up with everything that I have. This is like my last chance. When are you going to have another challenge? And how do I make sure that I can get in on that challenge? Challenge meaning business endeavor? To get to the castle. Oh, well, I mean, the cat, the cat, well, the uh, guys, and again, I'm not, we're booked up through the January next year already. The, the, everything is free on my site. Okay, but and the uh, for those of that are veterans or students, we have special rates, um, and those of you that are active duty military, we have special rates. But uh, uh, being a woman, just a woman, and I don't mean just a woman, but being a woman that you know you're you, you pay the same as a guy. Okay, so we don't discriminate that way. But I mean the um, keep in touch with Winnica uh, on my site, and um, the. Um, but I mean, the, the, the seminar is a life-changing experience. And the, now, people ask me, not all the time, but a lot, why don't I give seminars to groups of big groups? Because I can't keep you accountable. I can't keep track of five, six, eight, nine hundred people. As smart as I am, and I am smart, I can't. But I can keep track of a hundred people a year. And a third of you will drop out within that year because you're going to find it too tough. You're going to find it too tough. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, Mr. Pena. Thanks for uh, taking the call, uh, question. Uh, so my question is, uh, I've you know, heard you talk about the uh, Dr. Spock, Dr. Spock book. Correct. On raising kids. Yeah, so I've got two kids. I work 80 hours a week, so unfortunately I can't really be there that much. And my wife's really not on board with Dr. Spock. So w what kind of advice would you give to, to well, our, I mean, our family? They, well, It'd be nice to understand why she's not on board with Dr. Spock, but be that as it may, the um, kids follow your lead. Uh, and uh, if you're not home much and they just see your wife, they follow her lead. And uh, love doesn't get the job done. And being a nurturing mother doesn't get the fucking job done. Because a lot of you had nurturing mothers, and now look at you. I had a nurturing mother, but I had a dad that kicked the shit out of me. Beat me like a rented fucking mule. And if, if my father was still alive, and I have uncles, and they'd say, Manny, you're too hard on Danny. And he would say, just as he looked into the camera and said, my son's successful not because of me, but in spite of me, he looked him in the eye and says, how's your program working out with your crackhead fucking whore daughter? <laughs> Because when they compared me, no matter how much I did wrong, my success, I don't know anything other than dropping the ball in center field, which I have nightmares about to this day. I've only had success. And when you've only had success all your fucking life, I make money by accident. I don't know failure. I just don't. And it's infectious. And you start not hanging or chilling, exposing and not exposing yourself in a sexual way. Exposing yourself. i got to be careful about all these words now. If you start exposing yourself to high-performance people, I mean, and, uh, you'll forget how to be a loser. You'll forget how to be a loser. So, I mean, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not easy, but you've got to be hard on the kids. For example, all of you guys probably had bicycles with trainer wheels, right? on the little wheels on the side of the bicycle when you ride it and you didn't fall off and then when the, your parents took the trainer wheels off, what happened? You fell over on your head. And what did your mother probably, maybe your father, oh, poor baby, poor baby, and rub your head? When I fell off my bike, my dad hit me. <laughs> you fucking little weenies, get up. Stand up, stop crying. Smart man. Yeah, I mean, fucking man up. And now look at me. I mean, I wish love got the job done. I swear to God I do. But it doesn't. And God doesn't get the fucking job done either. God helps those who help the motherfucking self. <laughs> Praise the Lord and pass the fucking ammunition. That has one more question. Uh, or wait till the end. Yeah. Okay. Right. You want to go back? Yes, sir. <laughs> Dan, I uh, found you on on uh, YouTube. Okay. And. Um, you know, I'm I'm connected with some people that are millionaires and multimillionaires now. But Good. when I saw what you were doing, I I wanted to go to another scale. Can you do with your mentorship? Can you do what you did back in Absolutely. the day? Absolutely. I mean, it's easier if you have no money, you can make a lot of money. But for those of you that have a few bucks, 
It's easier. It just is. Because the motivated seller doesn't have to be quite as motivated. It's just easier. But I, I, I assume that everybody comes to me with nothing. A blank, as uh, uh, Tabula Rossa, as Descartes said, a blank tablet. But if you have, like the 17-year-old kid came to me with nothing, who's flying around in his goddamn jet now. I mean, he came to me with nothing. But the kid, and the reason why kids get it easier than adults, they have less baggage. They have less baggage. When I told the, Josh did 99% of what I told him to do, exactly like I told him to do it. Exactly. And, but I have, I have other people that have, you know, followed the precepts that are old. I mean, not old. I mean, I'm probably, uh, I'm, uh, am I old enough to, I'm probably old enough to be your father. No, no, no. Okay, 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 okay. Now, I was just going to say oh, we're, something. We're close. We're close, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, we've got guys, the oldest is 77 and the youngest is 13. 77. But I mean, you, you got to want it. You got to want it. <laughs> And, um, and not many people are wanting to, you know, make the sacrifices. And when I started this, there was no internet. All you had was shoe leather. I used to take buses and trains to make meetings. No Skype, no Zoom. Yes, the answer is Thank yes. you, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, uh, Dan. Yeah, and I'm here because of that gentleman, my husband, who oh, found okay. you on YouTube. So I, I got a little tripped up. I hope I didn't miss anything in my notes. But I got tripped up when you spoke of personal development because in the industry that I'm in now, and um, it, I'm being taught that personal development helps to build your belief. So just correct me. Are, are you saying that? There is no value in personal no, development? No, no, what I'm saying is almost, there is almost no value because people that sell you personal development are selling you something. If personal development existed with no sales, no product, no upsell, no side sale, no affiliate programs, et cetera, et cetera, but they don't. Okay. Okay. Okay? Got, gotcha. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, Dan. Thank you for taking the time to come here. Uh, my question is this. I'm in the healthcare business. We trade uh, medical imaging equipment. Now it's a family business, and my father's the head of it, and you're the only person who I've found outside of my head who has the same point of view on engineers. So what would, you, what, what would your advice be to me to try and take Well, either leave or buy your dad out. Throw him out, kick him to the curb. Not in a nice way, but kick him to the curb. All right. Got it. Thank you. Uh, hey, Dan. My name's DJ. I uh, went to BU. I graduated the same year as your daughter. But uh, we never, I don't, I don't remember. But uh, my question to you is, how come you didn't wear a frog tie today? Right. Oh. Um, also, can you explain to because, us uh, the No, philosophy? I didn't wear a frog tie, and I don't have frog cufflinks. I have antique uh, Queen Victoria cufflinks, and I have a, um, a tie... Um, I didn't go to a school that, you know how you have school ties? Okay, well, the, uh, uh, when I got my investiture, when the queen appointed me, uh, what do you call it, a member of St. John, which is a big honor, I'm wearing the tie from that investiture, so I don't have a frog tie today. Plus, it matches my pinstripes to color. Oh, there you go. I just wanted to, if you could just, like, explain, like, uh, when you learn that philosophy about frogs. You know? Oh, well, well, because when I, when I first went to work for a Wall Street firm in 1972, the, um, they didn't really have any formal uh, sales program, training programs. And so what they did is they, uh, uh, they give you the yellow pages. Call everybody in the yellow pages. And when you got through the yellow pages, call everybody in the white pages. And then when you got down to the white pages, you called, you cold called every building that had more than 10 stories on Wall Street. Well, every building on Wall Street has 10 stories. And so you got to kiss a lot of frogs, Pena, before you're going to find a customer. And you got to turn over a lot of rocks. And so uh, in the house, we probably have two or 300 frogs. And we have, uh, and I have uh, cufflinks and, and ties. Because uh, I never want to forget, because it's easy to get satiated. It's easy if you haven't had to work for over 30 years. 
you know, uh, and the, it's, it's easy. Well, I, I'm not going to, uh, I won't work today. Um, but there was 25 years straight from 1991 to 1996, I didn't take a day off. 25 years straight, 1991, 71 to 1996. 71 to 90, I didn't take a day off. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Penna. My name is Boris, I'm 19, and I became a business broker recently, and today I closed my first deal. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, so I got, I'm gonna get a commission check soon, $7,000 made out to me, and now I'm gonna have $7,000. Well, good. Yeah, so. Um, don't, don't go out and spend it on a big dinner, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> no, I think they buy you dinner when you make a, okay. when you make a deal. But um, so, but I'd like to be, uh, I'd like to acquire businesses. And so with the cold calling that I do to try to get listings, I mean, I figured after watching your videos, I could do a lot of cold calling on my own to acquire, I'm interested in funeral homes right now. And um, I don't know, I mean, I have some money, but I don't really need money. I can, business like, brokers is, uh, I don't like business brokers, but business brokers is a good conduit for motivated sellers. Cause uh -huh. you really know if the seller's motivated or not. Right. Even though you're gonna tell me that, 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 you know, that... Uh, uh, you won't take less than Exactly. X. But see, because a business broker gets paid as a percentage of the sales price. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but that's a perfect uh, avenue to find motivated sellers. So keep... Um, so Correct. And cold call. Yeah. You know, when our children uh, uh, finished undergraduate school, and they both worked before they went undergraduate school. I told both Kelly and uh, Derek, make 300 cold calls a day, and you'll lead the nation in sales or in anything you do. 300 cold calls a day. And that's getting through to somebody, not leaving a message, blah, blah, blah. Oh, shit. And they both did. You cannot, even if you're a retard like you guys, if you make 300 legitimate cold calls, you'll make a million dollars a year, no problem. And that's not a lot of money, and I, I say that uh, begrudgingly, but to most people it is. That's, 12, that's 1,500 cold calls a week. That's 6,000 fucking cold calls a month. That's 72,000 cold calls a year. If you can't make a million out, you ought to kill yourself, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thanks. Yes, sir. Hey, Dan, how you doing? My name is Vaughn, and I have a two-part question. Sure. Um, I run an online company similar like Jason Capital, Brian Rose, information-based, and I'm wondering how the QLA methodology with the Dream Team and all of that and having that together to go to a bank to get funding, how does that uh, kind of well, switch I mean, over? You can only get, well, I say only. It's easier to get funding if you're going to buy something. Right. It's, it's, it's not so easy if you're just looking for working capital. Uh, the... Uh, but if you're going to acquire your comp competitors, for example, okay, a dream team, uh, anchor chairman, just like it's set, set up in, on my website and all the materials. And I have, I have a, uh, 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 a, what do you call it, a podcast, How to Build a Dream Team. Oh, you just made me think of something. I've got a, a podcast, How to Get the Fucking Money. And I have another podcast, Deal Flow, How Do I Get Deals. Right. Those two links on my site are the least clicked. In a given month, between those two links, how do you get the fucking money and deal flow? I'll have less than 10 clicks, and I have 200,000 people on the fucking site. <laughs> now, what does that say about you retards? Because if you know how to get the fucking money, and you know how to create deal flow, you got no more excuses, you fucking reprobate. Because <laughs> you're not serious. You're pretending. Pretenders. But the answer is, you can find, buy out your competitors. Uh, well, I didn't really kind of want to go that route. Okay. Uh, um, but I was wondering, what advice did you give to Capital and Rose? In I terms told him to triple his prices. Done deal. And another thing, I actually sell to uh, religious folks, um, and I know you mentored uh, Joel Osteen's dad way back in the day. Correct. Yes, I did. Any tips you gave him on how to kind of get through to them? Yeah, to have I said them? that you got to make money off religion, which Joel is. Right. His dad didn't. Yeah, he wasn't smart that way. Yeah, yeah. And and the uh, but um, he came to one of my first seminars in Houston uh -huh. back in the uh, middle '90s, 
And uh, Joel is refined, uh, and I'm not saying in a bad way, milking his congregation. Yeah. But a lot of these goddamn ministers milk the congregation. I mean, they get, you know. Yes. All right, cool. Thank you, man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, Mr. Dan. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm from Romania, and um, I'm a J1 student. This this time is my third time when I came in in US, and uh, I came uh, the, this time because uh, my mom is here, and I had the opportunity to see her, and uh, now she uh, she is by uh, by herself here. And uh, all all of my family is back home. And now I don't know if I want to stay here or I have to to go back home. I I, I don't know what the cheese. Yeah, but, uh, but but if you stay here, is it only to support your mother? No. Okay. And if you want to go back home, it's to do what? I I don't know. I want to become wealthy. Well, I mean, it's easier to become wealthy here than in Romania. Although we have Romanian mentees, millionaires, we do, but it's harder. Here it's, e well, no, it's not easy, easy, but it, Lithuania, Hungary, Romania, those countries, it's harder. Oh, the best deal in 25 years was just done by one of my Hungarian mentees, and he just did the second best deal in 25 years on top of that deal, and he's a little shit. Uh, uh, Peter, if you're listening, I mean, I mean, he didn't have enough self-confidence to fucking brush his own teeth. I mean, and now he's a wealthy guy on the cover of Hungarian business, and he did it without paying one bribe. <laughs> and that's a big deal in that part of the world. So, but I mean, you gotta follow your heart. I don't mean a lovey, gushy way for your mom. I mean, you gotta follow your heart. Because in 25 years from now, your mother's gonna be dead. And you're gonna regret that you spend any fucking time with her. Yep, yep. I'm in the regret minimization business. What are you going to tell your grandkids during the greatest transformation of fucking wealth in the history of the planet? What were you doing other than having a thumb up your ass? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, Dan, um, what countries do you see the most promising growth in healthcare? Uh, now, please again. What countries do you see the most promising promising growth in healthcare services and promising growth in general? America. America? Okay. Yep. Thanks. Hi, Dan. Um, I have a two-part question. Cool. Um, one is, I am a day trader and um, I've been... Day, day trader? Yeah, I'm a okay, day trader gotcha. in the market and um, I've been day trading full-time, five months. First couple of months, it was rocky. Now, I'm getting the hang of things. Um, my earnings this month, I'm up 80% on my um, winning trades and I'm up over 100% in terms of my profits. And um, so, but now that I'm getting the hang of it, I see myself kind of laying back. Like, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm looking for in the market. So now it's like, I kind of don't because have much to do. Because you stop playing to win and you start playing not to lose. I suffer. I mean, I, I used to, you know, I came out of the Wall Street, you know, uh, background. And it's easy. You know, and the... Um, it's, it's tough because you've got nobody around you uh, that's making a million dollars a week. I remember the first day I made $10,000 on Wall Street. I remember the first day I made $100,000. I remember the first day I made a million dollars. And I remember the first fucking day I made $100 million in one fucking day. And whenever I need a, 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 a Viagra from, I mean, I just think of that. And I pole vault. <laughs> <laughs> and unless, because I can draw back on those memories. If you don't think you can drink and fuck all night, guess what? You won't be able to drink and fuck all night. <laughs> if you don't have it up here, you don't have it. It's up here first, it's down here second. Cool, cool. I just want to know, you know, I want to fill up my time more with other projects. Okay, well, so you know, my so, second part question okay, to that on. is um, I'm looking into the solar energy business, uh, renewable energy business, okay. and also real estate. Uh, since you used to be in the oil industry, what do you see um, renewable alternative energy going? Alternative energy is hot. It's not as hot as cybersecurity, but it's hot. Alternative energy. Alternative energy, which is solar, blah, 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 wind, and... 
All right, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Dan. I'm in the restaurant food service business as a single unit owner. Restaurant is a tough business. Yeah, definitely. And oh, that, that was my, I wanted to know your thoughts about the oh, restaurant well, I mean, it's food tough. service I mean, industry. there's no barrier to entry. Competition is fierce. They've got all these big chains that come and drive you out of business. I mean, the, um, I, I couldn't recommend with my hand on my heart that somebody go into that business. Um, uh, most of the people that are in that, not most, many of the people that are in that, those businesses are, they're family oriented. They want their cousins, their brothers, their uncles, and all, but you know, every other poor bastard that they know working there. Uh, but that's not a good reason to be in a business. Definitely understand. I just wanted to hear your thoughts. Okay, that. well, I mean, I'd find something else. Thank you so much. That's my I appreciate thought. it. <laughs> so, Right now, um, I just wanted to kind of clarify and see what, what you kind of recommend also. Uh, you said that it's kind of good to be a broker because you get access to all these deals and access to all these motivated no, sellers. No, no. You weren't listening. You so, have access to real motivated be, sellers. Correct. Most right. of the deals you sell are dog shit. Yeah. I know. Believe me. Okay. But one out of 10, one out of 20, one out of 50 is a deal with a motivated seller. The business brokers in one of the, uh, the first seminars I gave, the, uh, uh, the business business broker in the United States uh, came to the seminar uh, and he cherry picked his businesses to roll up industries from motivated sellers. Cherry pick meaning pick the best ones, the best ones. Okay, so now uh, when building a dream team, like, do you have to already know what industries you're going to go into, or just motivated well, sellers? Well, I mean, some optimizing? of the guys, some of the guys are generalists. Generalists meaning they were going to build a conglomerate, different kinds of companies, in, in, you know, to make a conglomerate. That's, that's not what I did. I'm a generalist now because I've been in so many different industries. But I mean, um, you can build a dream team uh, for, to build a conglomerate, meaning different companies. But they have to have some sort of synergism. You don't just buy willy-nilly uh, a lumber mill and a taco sh uh, a factory. I mean, they have to have some synergy. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Dan, thank you for teaching us. Uh, I'm Greg from New York, and a dear friend introduced me to your website. And we, I think you said that only 10 people a month uh, check out those two sites. Uh, correct. Correct? I think uh, I'm, I must have I used to them. live on 27th and Lexington. My office is right there. Okay. Right here, there. Well, um... One Penn Plaza. Okay, go ahead. So, since since I've been listening to you to you, um, it just so happened that I do estate planning and pension work, and I and in my mind was, how come do you teach about ESOPs or any anything on that level? Because some of my the reason you mean why twenty stock option. Yeah. Well, no, no. I'm interested. I teach you how to build generational wealth. Whether you're going to use an ESOP with the companies that you buy, that's up to you. But what we do is we teach you how to roll up companies, motivated sellers, and then exit. We do not buy any asset that we already don't have plan on selling. We're not building, you know, now some of the guys have built uh, what I call legacy uh, roll ups, meaning they want to leave it to their kids. Okay, that's not what, uh, some of the kids do it. That's not what I did. I don't, I have never, well not, almost never bought or purchased or acquired anything I didn't already have planned to sell it. Now, there's gonna be a time when the market rolls over, when the, when the bull die, dies, one year, five, whenever it is, it's gonna be like assholes and elbows down the toilet. The tidy bowl man, I mean, you know when you flush a toilet? Most of the people managing money, wealth today, have never seen a bad market. They went around in 87. I have. But all the guys that have are dead, got dementia, or not interested anymore. <laughs> there are going to be more opportunities when everything falls to shit. But it, it, takes, it takes balls. I mean, you got to step in, and you may have to put your whole net worth on the line. And then because you stop playing to win and you start playing not to lose, I've been there. So 
what what you're saying it, what there was a couple of times that I heard you on the v YouTube where it's right now this is an amazing opportunity for us because of the generation the one generation is getting out of those businesses Correct. that we choose so we so it's good and for the us. current generation got no balls okay we got one generation winning out they work 40 years uh, as a dentist or 40 years as a veterinarian or for whatever it is and they, they have no a succession plan. <clears throat> Their kids don't want the companies. They can't give them away. You're doing them a favor. And the generations in between, you and them, have no balls, no testosterone. They've all got vaginas. It's easy, it's like, as, as, my, as a, my daughter went, to, our daughter went to the seminar when she was 13 the first time. Easy peasy, daddy. It's easy peasy. And there's no fucking competition. Zero. It's like a bar for the guys. A bar of 25 hot chicks. Please, take me to bed. And I don't have AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a bar on, uh, called the uh, library. Uh, All you, uh, Brian, uh Brian buffet, Park Thursday, Library? Friday, and Saturday. Drinks were two bucks. This was 1960, no, 1970, 71. And I used to, I, I lived in a, uh, uh, this before I moved up to, to 70, uh, 27th and Lex, I used to take napkins and put food in my pockets so I could live the week. And then every once in a while, a napkin would leak and it fucked my suit all up. And I couldn't afford to take it to be dry cleaned. For those of you that have tried to take out mustard and, 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 and tomato ketchup with water, it doesn't work. It was 45, uh, 45 bucks a night, one toilet on, uh, on a floor, and for the guys, we used to use our sinks to pee in, so we didn't, you know, wash our face and pee in the sink if we didn't have to t take a, you know, a dump. I mean, I've been in New York, I mean, but it's, there's no competition. There's only maybe 10,000 people on the whole planet doing this. I mean the whole world. 10,000, maybe. A lot of people come to the site, but nobody pulls the trigger. It's like the, the 300 people that didn't show up today. And only a few of you are going to pull the trigger. And it's the regrets. Why didn't I listen to that old fucker? Anything else? So th thank you. So I I bought. We're in the process of buying a distress. Two partners are fighting. It's a property in Manhattan, not too far from um, Flatiron Building, and we had a government agency willing to pay hire us. Uh, they want to rent out the building. My question with my partners is: Do we develop this on our? Our attendant plan, or just take the easy? No, no, no. It depends. You know, it, it's what's the low-hanging fruit. <sighs> you know, development is a pain, pain in the ass. You got to get permits. You got to do this. You got to do that. Two years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's easier ways to make money. I used to be in the building business. I mean, there's easier ways to make money. <coughs> Not easier, shorter time frame. There's no easy way to make money unless you're robbing banks or something. <laughs> but I mean, shorter time frame. And time is money. Excellent, okay. thank you. Next. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, I'm an active duty chief petty officer on board a submarine. Um, I have to be back tomorrow morning, so I don't have a whole lot of time. I want to get straight to the point. Um, I don't know anything about business. I don't know what capital is. I don't know what funding, loans, none. I don't know any of that shit. But I reached out to people like uh, uh, Greg Elliott, who's retiring, or the local credit union where I live, Alan Page, a bunch of people over in the Seattle area. Uh, what's my first step? Your first step is find an anchor chairman. It's on my website. Follow the seven steps. Find an anchor chairman. And don't call him anchor chairman. I call him anchor chairman because when you buy uh, renting buildings, you want an anchor tenant to take 40% of the building, and then it's easier to rent and lease the rest of the building. Find a chairman. Uh, find an industry. Find a chairman. Build your dream team, just as it says on the website, uh, with um, 
uh, industry experts, accountants, lawyers, etc., uh, and um, and do it. Act, but we've got active duty guys. Are you are you the submariner that's coming to the seminar? Uh, I'd I'd like to, sir. I don't. Okay. Well, there's 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 an uh, uh, there's another submariner guy that's coming to the seminar in January. Uh, the uh, and the, the he. Uh, and he was he went he got to, he was an E seven then he became a commissioned officer and he's uh, I forget what he is now Duke what Duke Elio. yeah yeah um, secondly uh, second question I had was um, one of the things that I deal with every day when I get a new sailor on board is uh, their complete and total lack of toughness <laughs> like, when I was coming up I used to get hit with a fire hose if I answered a question wrong. I mean, you know, they hit me with the bail or the, the, the leather part of it if I was kind of right. Um, now we can't scream at them. Uh, they, they I understand. Fold under pressure. I understand. Our, our attrition rate is ridiculous. Um, are you ever concerned when, you know, a lot of what you said, it's, it's funny, it's comical. I, I see the humor in it, but I don't, I can't laugh at it because I see where we're going. Yeah, well, then that's why I say we're through. And that's why, uh, you know, even though we'll, we'll, uh, in theory we should be able to kill off the Russians easy, but we won't kill off the Russians because they're tough. They're tough. Now, when I went through ranger school, they hung us from trees and put battery wires on our testicles. There are dozens and hundreds of lawsuits against the federal government because the guys couldn't have kids. They'd stake us out on ant hills and pour honey over us and let the ants eat us for two or three days. This was the fucking training. And now, and you're right, I mean, uh, when uh, the, the spirit of the bayonet used to be to kill, and you're, you're going through a boot camp, you know, many a broken tooth, cracked jaw, because your drill sergeant hits you in the face with the butt of the rifle. And now you wonder why we're all cunts. That's why I bring my own fucking security. <laughs> I, I'll get, I haven't, I'm not ignoring you. In a Toronto, somebody finally asked me, well, why did you bring the cricket bat? Fucking snowflake. I said, because they, your school told me I should have security, which they did. I'm not going to pay a bunch of fucking goons. No, I can do the same as they can. And I said, and, what, and then somebody asked me about 20 minutes ago, well, what do you do with a cricket bat? I swore to you. <laughs> And then I jumped down off the stage, and I said, because the first five or six of you aren't going to come at me, even though there's 400 of you, because you don't want to be the first one, two, or three that I knock their head off. But they had to ask me what I was going to do with a fucking cricket bat. That's, that's where we are. OK, back to you. Sorry. No, no worries, sir. No, none at all. Um, third question, final question. Uh, how do I get you, or how do I schedule a time where I can get you to come out to my base and maybe talk to uh, I my talk to guys? military bases. I'm talking to um, a, an elite group of, of, of uh, SEALs next month, and I'm also talking to a military base in California uh, the month after that. Um, and I can contact my office, and yes, if I can fit it in, I do. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. So uh, I want your advice on, on what you would do if you were somebody like me. I'm 31. I own my own business. Uh, we make about 120 grand a year, give or take, um, which I think is very low. I have another idea I might, I might do, uh, which I think could make maybe a million. But am I just, should I just abort everything and just Well, over? most of you that have businesses in the room should go home and turn the key. Does everybody understand that? Close them down. Don't open up Monday. I can say that I don't even have to look at your numbers. <laughs> Turn the key. Adios, motherfucker. Something new. Because most of you are living quiet lives of desperation. Most of you are living hand to mouth, paycheck to paycheck. That's a hell of an existence. I used to be there, believe me. I know what that feels like. You know, and, uh, but if you're not in a big margin, low hanging fruits, if you're not in the new economy, and if you're not on the Trump train, and I hate to keep using that term, but, which I, I coined to begin with, the Trump train, I said that he was gonna change the fucking financial world forever in December 2015 if he runs. 
and wins. He's going to crush the Democrats in the next election, whether he wins or loses the House in, uh, in, in November. People vote with their fucking paychecks. People vote with their fucking... And everybody is better off financially. The numbers are skyrocketing. The stock market skyrocketing. And when it gets down to check in the box for old Donald, with all his foibles, he can't... He keeps, you know, and I don't agree with everything he does. He steps on his dick. But he is a, a money-making motherfucker. And if you're not on one of those things, then you're dead meat. What's that thing? What, what, okay, what? okay. If, if you're not in health care, if you're not in telco, if you're not in uh, um, cybersecurity, if you're not in uh, radiology, if you're not in the, the things that building infrastructure, building roads, building bridges, you're fucked. Thank you're you. just fucked. You might as well blow, metaphorically, you might as well just blow your fucking brains out. <laughs> I, because Sally, she says, God damn it, Dan, you said, remember what the lawyers told us. Uh, so, you know, fuck the lawyers, you know. Nice. <laughs> <clears throat> Hi, Dan. I, wa I was wondering if you could maybe elaborate on <clears throat> what uh, types well, of... You were sitting here, yeah, right? Yeah, I was sitting up okay, front okay. there. This is, my, this is question number okay, two. Okay, I just, you know, go uh, ahead. I was, I was wondering if you could el elaborate on what type of uh, businesses that your mentee Josh Kim is purchasing and and what is what is his uh, actual he's acquisition strategy he's purchasing a cross between assisted living when you when you get out of you know now they want to get you out of the hospital as soon as possible they don't want to keep you in the hospital because it costs too much money and they send you to a, uh, a, a rehab physical therapist that kind of thing he's buying those companies that's what he's rolling up rehab company. rehab, rehab. yeah and how's he, he's doing like owner financing with those? Or? I mean, well, he's using SBA in this country is a license to steal legally. I'm going to say it again. SBA, Small Business Administration Loans, is a license to steal legally. I'm going to say it again. They don't have it in other parts of the world. The SBA, $7 million you can take from the, not take in a bad way, you can get from the government guaranteed loan. Pardon? Yeah, four, four to eight percent. Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's a no brainer, but hardly anybody uses it. So what type of rehab facilities? No, the rehab. I mean, uh, you got to do therapy on your leg. You got to do, pull the machines down. He's buying small, like one to three million dollar. No, one to five. One to five. Rolling consolidate. Correct. But he's not the only one. I mean, I've got fifty guys in America doing something similar. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure to be here today to see Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question. I'm, I've been a hairstylist for the last 30 years. Okay. And I've done... Uh, I've rolled up hairstylists. Yeah. I, I, I did the Clinton family, the Bush family. I've done all of them. I, I travel all around the world, Germany, the Adlon Hotel, everything. And um, I want to open uh, hundreds of salons around the United States, even in Europe. My problem is how do I find a team I can trust? How do I find a good team? And that's what I'm having well, a hard time. You, you, you don't find a team by not taking action. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. We rolled up uh, hair salons in the late 90s. Um, what was that guy's name, Sally? He, he, he came out of Fidel Sassoon. Soon, Delaria, who? No, um, anyway, he was uh, Persian. Uh, or now they call him Persian. He was an Iranian. But anyway, now they're Persian. Well, right? for, I, do, I do a man's haircut. It's $1,000. A woman's haircut is $2,500. Okay, well, so $2, well, well, but he rolled them up. But, but you've got to find a motivated seller. Well, I, 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 I starting them from the scratch problem is, is I need to find a team to implement it so well, I can I mean, get it set the, up. The, the, and that's the problem I'm having. The more you question it, the, the, the less you're going to be inclined to pull a trigger. I would rather make a mistake than just think about making a mistake. See, you're so afraid... You're used, so used to playing not to, to win and playing not to lose. Don't worry about it. I'm not saying throw the shit to the wind. I'm not saying that either, okay? But what I am saying is that, and I told the kids at dinner last night, um, and I told the, um, uh, the, um, the kids that were taking us around on a tour. By the way, they were very nice to us yesterday, all through, taking us all through Boston, blah, blah, blah. But you kids, not just them because they're young, you worry about shit that doesn't matter. You worry about 10 things, maybe only one's going to happen. Yeah. 
You worry about things that don't matter. Uh, you know, I'm famous for turning 800 bucks into a half a, a billion bucks in an industry I knew nothing about. I didn't know this is l oil and gas come up the same hole, and then there's a separator on top. I thought oil and gas came up two motherfucking different holes. And I raised a billion dollars, not knowing nothing. That's bad English. And I teach, the more you know, the less you're going to succeed. Thank you. You're welcome. So trial and error. John? No, no, follow the model. You can eliminate most of the errors by just following the steps. You have a dream team. You've got two industry experts. They've got 50 years between them. You've got a, a transaction accountant and a transaction lawyer. They've got 50 years between them. You've got a CFO that's got 20 or 30 years. You've got an anchor chairman that's got 30 or 40 years. You've got 150 years of experience that have made all those errors. You're still going to make mistakes. Right, Tom? You're still, you're still going to make mistakes. But, I mean, that's why you have having the dream team, you know? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, um, I have a question for you about the economy. Um, statistically showing, a recession happens every 10 years. Uh, we haven't had a depression in over a decade. Um, it's been 10 years already since the last recession. Um, yes, the market is doing great right now. Um, in terms of Trump in office, the bills he's passing, things are going forward. Uh, but where do you see the economy going? Um, I, I, the, uh, the, uh, even if Trump doesn't win, which God forbid, he doesn't win this next election, um, the, 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 he's done away with 75,000 pages of bureaucracy at the government level. 75,000 pages. He's done away. Uh, the banks are, uh, uh, they, they, there's energy in the banking system that it'll take 25 years to get rid of. But you're all afraid. I've been yelling this since I, I didn't even think we had a recession in 2008-9. I would have closed all the banks. I would have put them all out of business. Trump would too. But President Bush too, and I knew President Bush won. I know he's still alive. President Bush too and Obama didn't want that on their watch. Because they're more interested in selling motherfucking books than doing what's right. I don't, you know, I don't give a shit, you know. I, I, if you like me when you leave here, I didn't do my job. Because you're all weenies. You got no balls. What you're saying is just pull the trigger. Correct. Just do it. I, I mean, my website says I took the, uh, the Nike, just do it, and I said, just fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hello, Alpha Theo. Dan, I'm from Boyle Heights, hello, yep. and we went to the same undergrad. Um, I have a question about the interest, industry that I'm interested in is recovery, not, not self-help, like personal development, but helping people overcome painful childhoods, yeah, like, yeah. Okay. like psychology, I guess. Yep, yeah, I, understand. How to monetize that. I have two or three uh, gals that are in that, um, uh, get, getting over childhood trauma, that kind of, uh, those, you can't give the, the people that own those practices can't give them away. There's no succession. You can roll those up. And you put, do it on a fi uh, uh, financing, uh, seller's earn out. It's all on my site, these words, if you don't understand what I'm talking about. And uh, you're doing them a favor. Otherwise, you know, when they, when they retire, they're going to have to walk away from their practice, and it's not going to be worth anything. At least you're going to pay them. And by the way, those practices normally sell for one year's revenue. Psychiatric shrink practices sell for one year's revenue. Small independent accounting accountants, one year's revenue. Between 0.75 and 1.25 years revenue. You don't even have to look at the fucking books. Show me your tax returns. Okay, I'll give you 600,000. You don't like it, next. And you're not there to romance, and you're not trying to sleep with them. You don't give a shit if they like you. You don't like it, lady, next. It's a numbers game. Josh Kim makes 30 to 50 cold calls a day today, and he's rich. He makes them from his plane now. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done in the last three years? Nothing. 
He was seven. Don't, don't, doesn't that resonate on your fucking pea fucking brains, rotted brains? He was 17 fucking years old. Now he flies around in a motherfucking jet. You should be embarrassed. Jesus Christ. And he's just one. I got a jump bunch of them. But they followed the steps. They followed the steps. Yes, sir. Hello, Dan. My name is Giovanni. I'm from Pennsylvania. And I want to grow the go-to business for high-ticket art sales. Art now, mean? Uh, art meaning uh, original artworks created from 20,000 upwards. Okay. And I was wondering, if I were to build a company like that, would I structure it towards privately, or should I take it on the stock market? Well, you, know, you, you start privately and let the market tell you. By the way, the market dictates whether you sell it on an IPO or you sell it to an industry giant. The market. You don't, you know, you don't decide. If, uh, uh, if Warren Buffett all of a sudden falls in love with that, you're going to be selling to Warren. Okay? Uh, and also the, where the economy is. And the economy is cyclical just like the weather. It depends where we are in the market. Thank you, Dan. And I'd also like to... <laughs> I'm a mentee of one of your uh, me previous mentees, uh, Dan, uh, Dan Locke. Dan I came to me in 2003. Could hardly speak English. Little Chinaman. Little fucking midget Chinaman. He came to me, he bought me breakfast in, in uh, Los Angeles, and he gave me, I have it on my desk to this day, a jade uh, uh, gold-plated frog on a, uh, some kind of hocus-pocus Chinaman jade, you know. <laughs> and I told him what to do, and he was 23 now, then, he's now 36, I think. And now he's interviewing me in his $15 million penthouse January the 25th in Vancouver. And um, the, he's a smart little shit. And... Um, but when they listen to me, but now, now when you're 35, 40, you're gonna, by the time you get home, you're going to think of a better way because you're a cunt <laughs> and your parents had syphilis or some shit and it rotted your brain. <laughs> but Dan, Dan, I, I love the kid. Thanks. In fact, when he got married, he asked Sally and I to fly to Vancouver to approve of his wife before he married her. Say hello to Dan. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Pena. Uh, first, thanks for making the mentee calls available this past, I guess, two months ago when you made those available. That was very helpful. Um, so my question is, having talked to banks over the last month, um, now I have a few banks available. Is the idea to shop deals simultaneously to create a feeding frenzy or to shop one at a time to okay, see what's back? Back up a second. Shop okay. to wh whom? What but to whom? So I'm saying once you have a deal, you have the motivated seller, and you have banks that are oh, interested. Oh, okay, okay. No, the system, and it says it on the website in, 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 in my uh, podcast, you're warming up banks from about, when you've built up about two-thirds of your dream team, you're warming up banks, oh, you're, uh, uh, and we have the scripts, uh, uh, you're still in the lending mode, healthcare, assisted living, what are the parameters, uh, three to five times cash flow, blah, blah. So you already have that general. So you've already talked to 10 or 15 or 20 banks. So now you got a deal. So now you come back. Now that deal that I told you about five weeks ago, this is an example of one. And you take it to five different banks. Simultaneously? And so, okay, and, you, and if they ask you, are you talking to other banks, you tell them yes. This is a service business, Mr. Banker. We're going to go where we can find the best deal, the best terms, blah, 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 blah. And so, some of my uh, mentees are going uh, to box seats at basketball and football games uh, because they're desperate for business. See, you don't realize I've got a slide uh, that I put on the, um, on the Internet. It's a bank in Atlanta. We have bank to lend. One of my mentees, you, took a picture and sent it to me. I put it on the Internet. Three or 400,000 people have looked at that. You know how many people went to the motherfucking bank? One. One single person. A brother in fucking Atlanta. A poor bumfuck brother from Atlanta. And he says, one out of 360,000 people. 
And he says, yeah, and the sign's still on the bank in Atlanta. It's A, a, a and B or, look at my website. It's on my website. If I, in my day, I would have been on that bank like stink on shit. Yes, sir. Mr. Pena, thank you for, thank you for coming here. Uh, you said something in the beginning. By the way, I've got like four questions, not Okay, one. go ahead. So first one is wealth, risk, reward, not what? The heck does that wealth, mean? Wealth, risk, reward, not. Yes, so I've heard you say that before, obviously. The wealth, where... risk, reward ratio or formula that you were taught and your parents were taught doesn't work anymore. Hard work, 40 years at a company, doesn't allow you to be retired. It's bullshit. It's like that pile of shit that I showed you. It's all bullshit. But yet the schools are still teaching the same bullshit. And that's why they don't, you know, because for them to change that and teach a non-fee-bearing system, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Merrill Lynch aren't going to give the schools any money anymore. So they're not going to teach. That's why there's hardly anybody, in the, there's maybe 10,000 people on the whole planet that are doing the QLA system. But the reason that I come to talk to schools about that is because great school here, but it's not, you know, it's teaching the same thing I taught 25 years ago, as far as I can tell. It's some variation, but it's a great school. But I would rather go to a school you don't have to explain about. I would rather go to a, a you know, a BU uh, um, than uh, where I went to school. Because, well, if you live in this part of the world, I mean, you don't have to explain about BU. It's like the doctor that came up to us at dinner last night, who was a Harvard doctor. <laughs> Harvard. And, and, the, um, and it's all right if they, you know, got, you know, they... They, they look down at you, you know? They're just across the fucking river someplace, wherever it is. But when my daughter went to, our daughter went to, they said we used to go across the river to see if we could find our future husband. To, to Harvard? Well, Harvard, MIT, those schools over there. Yeah. But, I mean, no Harvard guy would ever marry our daughter. I mean, if she ever got kidnapped, they'd give her back in two hours. <laughs> I mean, Kelly's a tough bitch. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, sh this one goes along with the uh, rather make a mistake, what you said, uh, than think about making a mistake. So um, I think he may be here, and I don't know, uh, I don't want to embarrass anyone, but is the guy that got kicked out of the last seminar, is he in the room? No. Okay, never mind that. Oh, he's from Brazil. Okay, then I want to punch somebody else in the face. Okay. Next. Oh, good point. Yes, sir. He knocks at our door at 1.30 in the morning, right? Screaming and yelling. I get up out of bed. Sally gets up out of bed. And um, I'm going to throw him off the balcony. My, for those, well, we live on the second floor in the balcony. And, yeah, and, 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 and Sally, need, needless to say, I'm not putting words in her mouth. She's sitting right here. Uh, we don't need that. And so Sally walks him down the staircase and out the door, he's being a psycho. What I did know is he went into two or three other rooms to harass people, one of which a good looking doctor, a lady doctor. Six grown men were in that, within ear shouting, with, between where you are sitting, Jason, Tom, you, Could, bedrooms on the same floor. Not one single man, except one, came out to see somebody getting raped, killed, or murdered. One guy who came out to take pictures, the little shit tried to kill. This is a little skinny shit about your size. We had three big black dudes, brothers, not a one has got any testicles. <laughs> The next day, when the police drug him off, as you see on the internet, he said he was going to cut the eyes out of the black brothers and eat them. Okay? He said, I'm waiting for you at the airport, assholes. I'm going to kill you all. Now, we got 19 people in that fucking seminar room. Three big black dudes. They were changing their airline tickets so they didn't have to fly out of Edinburgh. 
as God is my witness. This little shit, I could snap his neck like a fucking pencil. That, that's why I say, when I say you got no balls anymore, you got no balls anymore. My wife drags the guy down the fucking staircase. And you're all there huddled someplace, <laughs> putting furniture against the door. When I say you're through as a race, I mean you're fucking through. All right, so these are working back from the beginning of the talk. So uh, you talked about at some point about a masculinity, sperm count, testosterone. Correct. Getting tested. It's down so significantly. In men in America, not just men in America, men in every place. In the spirit of um, modeling people, model yourself potentially or, of course, 100% right now. Um, what do I do to do that for myself? Obviously well, I mean, if you're in the military and you can't hit anybody anymore, you got a problem. Right. If you're in the military and nobody's hitting you, you got a problem. Okay? Uh, the, uh, where I came from, I mean, uh, <coughs> there was never any question well, what you did. If somebody insulted your family, your race, your, I mean, there was never any question. You went to war. You went to fucking, you fucked him up or die trying. You fucked him up or die trying. And the, uh, but now, um, the, and the reason we started the boxing at the seminar is the, um, some of the guys, that one guy, a PhD from uh, Saudi Arabia, had never been hit in the face. He's the guy that is throwing a, I think a right in the picture. Uh, uh, and I mean, he, he feels like a man now. He got beat up, but he feels like a man. Okay, and a couple of the guys got tuned up pretty good, but I mean the uh, if you've never been hit in the face, and I'm not suggesting, you, but if you, if you if you're 30, 25, 30 years old and you've never been punched in the mouth, something ain't right. Something ain't right. How can you go through school, schoolyard, first six years? Don't kids fight on the school ground anymore? I guess not. No, no, my neighborhood and some, I'm, I'm, some, I'm, some of the black neighborhoods, I mean, they still fight, you know, and now they shoot at you and shit like that. That's why I'm, I'm my own fucking security. <laughs> but I mean, you got you, you to gotta find somebody somewhere. Okay. Okay, one more question. You also said uh, in the beginning, um, there are three moving parts. To the moving parts are free cash flow. It's got to cover debt service, motivated seller. It's all on the site. Cash flow. Covering debt service, motivated seller. That's it. And then you said there's, but there's really one. The one is motivated seller. That. Okay, next. I think we're running a little bit short on time, so these will be our last questions okay, of the Okay, very good. Hey, Peña. Yes, sir. Will you recommend to learn as much as possible before uh, as, about the industry you want no. to get in? No, but learn nothing. Or rely on the technical no, no, well, Nothing. Are you deaf? No. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And but somehow you gotta lead the team, right? You gotta no, no, know no. something about your the... chairman is leading the team. Okay. Good. Thank you. Rick Scott, who's the current governor of Florida, running for senator of the United States of Florida, was my lawyer back in the day. I made 50, 60 million dollars on a deal, and he says, I gotta make the same kind of money you do, Dan. What do I do? I said, You've gotta leave me. He said, Where should I go? I said, Healthcare Telco. Two and a half Bloody Marys later, he picked healthcare without ever cracking a book. He built the largest healthcare company on the planet, Columbia Healthcare. $30 billion, 400,000 employees, 300 hospitals in seven years. He couldn't spell health care. <laughs> okay, next, sir. Um, I have a bit of a technical question. I understand the whole uh, success fee basis, but in the book it says that the audits are not part of the... No, you can't get an audit on success fee, delayed fees, because it's against GAAP, the General Accepted Accounting Principles. Correct. But they can do due diligence on your um, acquisition. So due diligence... Yeah, would... due diligence is not an audit. So how would we present audited numbers to the bank without... Well, you're not presenting an audit numbers. You're presenting due diligence numbers. Okay, understood. Okay? Understood. Okay. Thanks. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, Mr. Pena. Thank you for being yep. here. Um, so I'm a, currently a senior in my last year university. 
Okay, graduate. Junior last year, yeah. Yeah, a bachelor's. Okay. Uh, not this school. Um, a school nobody would care about. Well, good. I, that's, that, those are my specialities. I, I, I went to schools. I, I flunked out of three schools. You, you, uh, by the way, in 1964, I went to San Jose State College. Why? It's not San Jose State University. Playboy Magazine voted it the Playboy School of the Year. <laughs> that's the only reason I went there. And I flunked out of that one even. Go ahead. Um, the school's not really doing anything for me. Do you think I'm it not surprised, but go ahead. And, and it's, it's, in, it's in Jersey, too. It's not, a, okay. not in Boston. So, um, Do you think it'd just be best just to drop out? No. If, you're, if you're a senior. Get the degree because yeah. it looks better. But if you're a freshman or a sophomore, don't waste your time. All right. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Okay, you're welcome. I think this will be our last question. Right. Dan, you're a fucking legend. Thank you. You're uh, one of the only people I believe on this planet, I feel that uh, you're just speaking the truth. And it's a refresher. I mean, I, I see the same uh, quality in you that I had in my granddad, a guy that uh, started with nothing and went out and just plundered through the world with a lot of heart, a lot of gut. And I truly see that. And I resonate with your message so much that I, I want to know, you know, whether I come to the castle at some point or not, uh, I'm going to work that out. Good. Um, you don't need to come to the castle. Yeah. All you got to do is work the system. Of course, of course. And you said the key is to stay accountable. I feel that Correct. the reason I would come to the castle is because I want you to, to pound well, my ass for a year. And I you know? would be disingenuous if I didn't tell you all the billionaires. Let me ask my question. I've laid hands on just like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I would be a liar. And so uh, the, um, but we got guys, I, sent, uh, I think I told, I have got a guy uh, who just sent me his net worth statement, 806 million cash. So I assume he's got other assets, so he's a billionaire, okay, uh, uh, off, off the system. I mean, I got a lot of people that have used the system. I've got a lot of people that just use it to lose weight. I've got a lot of people that use it to raise their kids. But make your kids accountable. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just want, speaking of accountability, how do you keep your, your kids accountable and yourself accountable? I keep myself accountable because I've developed ex extraordinary habits. Jim Ryan, arguably the greatest miler that ever lived that never won a gold medal at the Olympics, told me 50 years ago, motivation gets you going, Danny. Good habits keep you going. I've got extraordinary habits. I've got the same habits for 50 years. Thank you, kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now go out and rip their heads off and shit down their necks. Thank you.